on the, on the face. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Well, it's evening here in London. I'm, I'm sure we've got people watching all over the world, but it is evening here in London. It's 5.30 on the dot, and we are live for the Smashing Summit. I am Karen Cinnamon. I'm the founder of Smashing the Glass, and we've got such a treat of the next five hours of everything you need to know to plan your wedding your way. Um, we're going to have 12 segments, 12 different Facebook Lives, but they're all hashtagged. You should be able to see the hashtag on this one. Um, and you can just click on that hashtag and you can see all the segments together. And the reason we decided to do this summit was A, we know that this is something that would be so helpful for you, but B, we wanted to think of something really fantastic to um, launch our brand new I'm going to say at Members Club, we have launched a Members Club for Jewish and Jewish brides, grooms, and it's called the VIB Club. VIB stands for Very Important Bride, and I'm going to tell you all about it. I just want to see, you can hear some lovely piano in the music, that's wonderful Jamie playing. And we're going to have an amazing music segment at six o'clock in half an hour. I'm going to do all my times in UK, otherwise I'll just get so confused. So just minus five if you're watching on, in the East Coast, etc., etc. Hi, Bruce. Bruce is commenting. He's going to come on in 15 minutes. If you're live, um, drop me a comment and let me know where you are, what's happening in your part of the world, what you're up to. So, I want to tell everyone about our brand, hi Mel, great to have you on, about our brand new members club for Jewish and Jewish brides. It's an online members club that we've launched. We launched it for so many reasons, basically because we want to be able to help you in a much deeper way. Smashing the Glass is amazing and it's popular and we know it helps a lot of people, but there's a limit to it. And I do offer one-to-one -one consultancy as well, but I'm very booked up and it's not the most affordable price point. So we wanted to launch something that was in between, that was really affordable, where we could help you in a really deep way. I myself will be helping, um, along with a whole team of wedding experts, and there's discounts, and there's goodies, and there's all sorts of fabulous stuff. I'm gonna tell you all about it in a minute. Um, so where should we start with it? First of all, I want to say that if you love Smashing the Glass, you'll love this even more. It's, it's like STG Lux, your, your virtual maid of honor. Um, we've got a, a link just above, which if you click on it, you can find out much more about it. But I certainly wish I would have had this when I was planning my wedding. And I'm going to bring on Caroline, who's one of, <laughs> she's one of the lovely brides I work with on consultancy. Cause she told me she wished she would have had it when she was planning her wedding. So I like, did. Oh, hi. 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 This is lovely Caroline, who, um, wedding to Robbie we featured on Smash in the Glass a couple of weeks ago at Northbrook Park. Yep, that's right. And I thought it'd be great to have some real brides on as well, come a bit this way, because you don't just want to hear from me and the experts. She's got some amazing tips. You had a Jewish wedding. We had you? a Jewish wedding, that's which, right. Which we'll talk about in a sec. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you all about um, the VIB club a little bit. And Caroline's going to give some, some tips yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with the VIB club, the first thing you're going to get is discounts and gifts which from hundreds of worldwide incredible wedding vendors. Um, the link above, if you click on the link and go all the way to the bottom, you'll see all the vendors included. There's hundreds of them and they're amazing. But also as a member, you are going to get one of these. That's so cool. I wish I had one of those. <laughs> this is, we have been wanting to do this for years. We've finally done it. Um, it is, no, say goodbye to the days of horrible velvet pouches or I had mine wrapped in a plastic bag I don't know what you had I think mine was in a horrible velvet pouch <laughs> <laughs> because I was a little too early for these I know they're only no one's had them yet this is literally the first time the world has seen them so we've they've got this hot pink lining with a cute logo inside it's a really nice material um, it's kind of like a brush kind of cotton thing and of course we've got the smash and we've got a little smash in the glass so cool. tag there so every member gets one of these um, you can't get them for love nor money we're not selling them you can only get them if you're a member and I'm going to carry on telling you about the other benefits but I just want to tell you the price first of all the price is $97 it's a one-off one-time fee lifetime access or 70 pounds but for the first 100 members we're giving a discount for our first founding 100 members <laughs> so it's going to be 85 dollars or 60 pounds so if you want that special price you want to get purchasing quickly through that link so we're going to have the gifts and discounts you're going to get the pouch you're going to get um weekly online bridal club bridal master classes 
from the world's top wedding vendors on all the burning topics you need to know about. So anything okay. from... Come here with a hi. Oh, Sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, well, I mean, even... I'd love, to, I'd love people like Caroline to give, you know, some masterclasses on, you know, she's the open, yeah, she's just got married. Love to. You know, all the sort of hiccups that you wish, you know, you'd have known about. Yeah, um, but we're going to have like big, big wedding experts, um, everything from, you know, what could um what to expect at your first wedding dress fitting to like an ideal wedding day timeline to wedding food q a food story going to do a live q a in their kitchen i mean every single topic and also we want you to tell us what topics you want to hear about and we'll arrange it so that's every week on a wednesday it's a live masterclass inside the facebook group that we're creating what else have we got we've got something that Again, I'm so pleased Caroline's here because we've got Ask the Rabbi. And why am I going to mention I wish, Caroline? <laughs> I wish it. This is the most important. I know because I get asked a lot of religious type questions and I'm really not the best person. So we wanted to have fortnightly Ask the Rabbi sessions. But these are not just any rabbis. They're really inclusive rabbis. They're not, they don't judge. And the reason I mentioned Caroline is because one of the rabbis is the rabbi that I recommended. Yes. Caroline. Yeah. Um, because you were kind of worried that you couldn't have a rabbi. For yeah, your definitely. That was our first wedding. real hurdle. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Rabbi Paul was kind of incredible. So he's one of the, um, expert rabbis. And then we've also got an American rabbi. So one's UK based, one's American based. And they will come in every two weeks to answer all your questions inside the private group. And you will have direct access to me. So I help at the moment in a, in a Facebook group when I can, but it's almost getting too much. It's getting too busy. So I want to be able to help as much as I can on a much deeper level in whatever way I can in this new VIB Facebook group. And we are going to have not just me helping, but my whole team, my whole network helping with any questions you have at any point at any point in your wedding. We're going to have wedding hashtag masterminds as well because we know rabbis are important. But so yeah, hashtag. hashtag is just as important. <laughs> what was your hashtag? Actually, I had two. One was um, locked and loited because my new surname is Lloyd. Love it. And the other one was <laughs> <laughs> falling and Lloyd. So oh, we had two. cute. Yeah. And so you just followed both of them? Yeah, we did. Days. We did. We used both depending on if it was, you know, who wanted to use what. So, so yeah. our, our, one of our in-house writers, Sarah, she's actually a comedy writer when she's not writing smash the glass and she is going to be in charge of all your wedding hashtags you just put your details in and she's coming later this evening to talk about how to create your ideal wedding hashtag and she's going to also give some ideas to four couples that submitted some details in advance but again if you're inside the if you're inside the vib club we will help you with your wedding hashtag we will suggest i don't know four or five ideas and i'm sure the collective group as well the nice thing about the vib club is it's going to be a community of brides going through exactly what you're going through yeah grooms and mothers of the brides and everyone's welcome we called it vib very important bride because come on this is like my core audience i know my yes, audience exactly. and it's many brides i do love grooms and robbie's coming soon robbie is coming my husband is we love way. robbie we love grooms <laughs> everyone's welcome sorry Okay. Oh, this is coming soon. <laughs> We're going to do one, quarter two, quarter two. So, um, we are going to have the smash pouch. We're going to have the bespoke advice from me and my team. We're going to have wedding hashtag masterminds. We're going to have 10% discount or a very special gift from hundreds of amazing vendors like Brown's Bride, Banana Split, um, Blake Ezra, Bruce Russell is here tonight, David Pullum, <laughs> John Nassari, um, Mira Mira, Jose Vila, um, Details Details, Linda Howard. I mean, literally, I could go on and on. They're all incredible vendors and they all want to give you incredible discounts and gifts, special gifts. And it's all for the price is um, a special, it's normally $97 or I should have this written down at close to hand. It's $97 or £70. You can pay in either currency. But we've got the first 100 members are going to be £60 a year in the UK or... I need to remember that. I need to make a note of this. Or I think it's $87. I can't remember. Something like that. You'll see when you go on the VIB page. But it's a special, special launch price for the first 100 founding members to say thank you for coming on first. And we want to treat you like genuine VIBs. Oh, we've also got a vendor matching service as well. So that's the kind of basic VIB package. But if you want to go kind of one step further, we're doing VVIB. And that very, very important bride. And that extra V stands for vendor matching. You can, we will help match all your vendors for your wedding, which I know is something Caroline Exactly. Yeah, that's a great idea. So what tips do you have from what you went through with 
with your oh gosh Jewish so wedding. many things <laughs> <laughs> my tips um i think definitely nailing down the important bits first like the venue and the rabbi and that was something that i actually came to karen for um at the beginning because i was so lost and didn't know where to start um also not being from this country i know i no contacts of my own. So um, Karen really helped me with that. Um, so once we got our venue and the rabbi, uh, the rest was filling in uh, the parts, like the different vendors that you need and whatnot. Um, but I think just to have fun with it, really. Yes. yes. And um, of course, to have a place where you're going to have a lot of inspiration and, and useful uh, contacts and links. Oh, absolutely. Um, and what were some of the challenges of planning a Jewish wedding? Because I know a lot yeah. of our readers come to smash in the glass for that yeah absolutely and we um, love to help <laughs> well we yeah our, our issues were we could not find a rabbi on our own at first uh who would do the traditional bits of a jewish wedding that were really important to me and my family but would still marry uh myself and my fiance who was not and is not jewish uh, but we wanted a jewish wedding so that was actually quite hard to find um so yeah, I mean, yeah. Rabbi Paul Glantz is really yeah. our only option and he was just amazing was and amazing. he was, you know, willing to put in what we felt was important and uh, he was able to marry us into a chuppah and do the Shabbat Brachot and all the things that I had always dreamed yeah. of. And Rabbi really embraced it as and well, And he totally embraced it, really, <laughs> em really explained everything to all of our guests, all the rituals and the symbolism and everyone felt really included, so... I know, so and we will pop that link in the comment scene to Caroline's wedding. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, thank um, you. you got really creative and did so many fun so things. And I remember when you spoke, Robert, you said another tip potentially mm -hmm. is bringing in some help like six to eight weeks before. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all get a bit overwhelmed and. And I didn't know about this, but there is such a thing as an on-the-day coordinator, which mm -hmm. they don't just work on the day, they work six weeks beforehand, but they just tie yes. up the yeah, do the logistics, so yeah. that's a great tip as well. Yeah, so um, I didn't have that, and that's definitely something I wish I had done, because it definitely got really crazy about six to eight weeks before the wedding, and there's so many details and loose ends to tie up, so um, yeah, I just didn't really know about that, but yeah, that definitely would have no, been something. No, it's a great tip. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I want to bring in Bruce now, Bruce Russell. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for coming join us in a minute. Um, hi, Carl. Hi. <laughs> great to see you. How are you? Great. So, We're back. Yes, <laughs> Bruce and Karen. So, you may remember we did a fantastic live. It was fantastic, wasn't it? It was fun. It was really fun. <laughs> um, back in December, wasn't it? In the Corinthia? Yes, my God. It was gosh. December. Last um, year. Gosh, December last year on how to plan an amazing destination wedding. It was seriously one of the most fun uh, and fabulous Facebook lives. And I thought Bruce would be a great person to talk about something that's really, really important to all our couples, which is um, how to create a red wed uh, how to create a wedding that reflects who you are and what is important to you. Um, so yeah. And I think that's important because yes. what what I hear a lot of times when meeting with Jewish couples, it's it's either the same venue that their parents have gotten married in, or the sister had a wedding there, or this person got married a cousin, somebody within the family, and it's always well they did this, they did that, we did this, or you know they want to do this, and I think it's just kind of scaling it back a bit from the very beginning. And for me, before you know, clients come to me and say. What have you done? What have you done in this space? What do you think? Where and also, people do want this? to do something different, but they don't quite know how. Exactly. And for me, it's about understanding the couple first and really figuring out what brought you together, what is unique, what, what your likes, dislikes, loves, passions are about, so that we can then fine tune the little elements. Because it's not necessarily, personalization isn't necessarily about the big, oh, wow elements, but it's the small things that your guests who know you will kind of remember and be able to um, sort of differentiate and, and yeah. piece together You want, together you want the you. guests to walk in and say, this is so them. And exactly. The guests want exactly. So what, what about some starting points? Where can people start with like how to unearth a wedding I style? I think it's, it's look at the important elements for you, whether that's the venue, whether it's food, whether it's the music, the entertainment, and then scale it back and look at little pieces within that. So if you're thinking of, you know, uh, the first dance or an element of a song, why not work with the band and have someone personalize that, you know, Adele song that you love or 
and just piece your names into it or make it personal or relate it to something or a moment where you met and just use that to mm -hmm. and, and that's just a small element but I think people remember that it's really about looking at your own life as it is is there like an interior part of your house that reflects who you are or a favorite song or exactly book? in terms of starting points you don't have to get too clever with it no and which then ties in colors and depending on the venue when it comes to to the color elements and, and the style that you're going for remember that lighting changes everything so don't go into it thinking oh i have to do blue or i have to look at this it's kind of look at the elements that you can sort of change and tweak and complement really um we've got all kinds of questions and things Jimmy. coming in if we can have a look oh good at. <laughs> i love you um Mel uh, says, hi Karen, so excited, I've been waiting weeks. Hi Mel, and I also saw a comment of yours that said you wanted to buy a pouch, you're getting married in six weeks, can you just buy a pouch? At the moment, I'm afraid they are just for our members. We wanted to keep it exclusive for our members and we'd love to have you in the VIB club, so. But if um, they pay what, 70 pounds tonight, she can have a pouch. 60 pounds 60. just tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> you get a pouch and so much more and um, it's a shame that your wedding's so soon and you can't benefit from loads in the VIB club, but I promise you that even in the next six weeks, we've got some amazing live sessions. We've got all kinds of stuff happening. So yeah, at the moment, they are just for, not at the moment, they're always going to be just for VIBs, I'm afraid. Um, Carla, hi everyone. Looking forward to seeing you all tonight. Team Glam. Hi, Carla. Um, my brother's saying hi from across the <laughs> pond. Um, Rachel, Los Angeles watching. So many people. <laughs> but secretly from my phone whilst I'm at work. That's, we like that. <laughs> Isn't that when most of the wedding planning gets done? I was going to say, most of the wedding planning is uh, secretly on your phone I think, at work. I think they do it secretly on the phone at work, and then I usually get emails from a bride between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. my time. So, And then I get to respond in the morning, which is great. I want to say, I forgot to say right at the beginning, please leave us your comments. Any questions for Bruce, for me? Um, we are, the whole summit is about helping you plan your wedding your way. So comments, comments, comments. We want to hear from everyone. Um, Val Valentina, Italy watching. <laughs> this is like, the, not the Eurovision Song Contest, but I don't know. The Euro, Euro World Contest. Almost. <laughs> um, We've got Stephanie, who's an incredible Ketuba designer, saying so happy to be part of this, so exciting. So yeah, Stephanie's an incredible Ketuba designer, the Ketuba, she's offering a discount or a gift, I can't remember which. So yeah, all the vendors are offering everything for the VIBs, it's amazing. There's so much value. Um, Rebecca, she's amazing. She did all the kind of back-end stuff with VIB and made it happen, because we've been working on it for months, this. It's, it's, so there's a lot been going on, and Rebecca's um, helped us so much. Thank you, and lovely to have you with us. Um, Demetria, hi. Ben, hi. Claudine, hi. Nina, hi. Lauren, hi. Hi! <laughs> and what about talking about one thing I've seen that people have to be wary of is too much, you know. You want to personalize yes. everything. Yes. And by the way, I have some lipstick on this. Did you? Okay, that's <laughs> I fine. Just saw it. Um, exactly. I think you just have to look at it from an outsider's perspective as you're coming in in those details. And, you know, if you have a monogram or an emblem or something, it doesn't need to be everywhere. But just the fine, you know, defined places that you feel. Okay, during the reception, they're going to come in contact with this, this, and this. And maybe you personalize that. Yes. During dinner, they'll come in contact with these elements and maybe do it here. And there. It's really about looking at the day from a flow perspective and just making sure that it flows appropriately. I think of a wedding as a theater production. So it's <laughs> acts one through seven or one through 15. And it's really look at each individual component of the day and walk through it, literally, as if you're the guest. What are you going to see? What are you going to touch? What are you going to eat, smell, feel, listen? And look at those elements for each component. And that's how you personalize it. It's not necessarily personalizing it about you, right. but making it personal for the guest. So that the, you know, the auntie who's 95, or, you know, the cousin or nephew or a grandchild who's 10 for each of them it'll be a different personal experience and those are the elements you need to factor in and consider and by the way i'm a big fan of the idea of a of monogram and putting it on really unusual you can put them on macaroons or completely you can make it you can do it on drinks just... now oh, really? on, on the top of drinks oh, and do that. something like that I love or that. even the cocktail napkin even if they're paper napkins you can just get them printed and something and just make sure that the venue or the caterer 
displays them properly. That's the thing. You can have so many things, but if it's not displayed and presented in the right way, so that they face it and notice discreetly, of course, yeah. um, then you've kind of lost the effect. But, yeah. <laughs> um, no, Bruce is going to be a big part of our VIP club. He's one of my favorite wedding planners. He plans incredible weddings. Um, we actually met in the Savoy originally, so we I know did. you do luxury weddings, but also he's. <laughs> Creative genius, I know. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm always, Bruce always gets embarrassed when I talk like that. But yeah, it's true. Because it, it's not about me at the end of the day. And that's the thing I think sometimes people feel with wedding planners is that we're going to come in and just completely take over the day or take over the production if you want. And I know that it's important to work with bride, groom, parents, in laws, everyone in order to be able to get that day just right. And, yes. you know, from my perspective, I'm the middleman and I'm the outsider who's coming in to sort of ensure that the ship sails in, in the right direction. And it's really your show, it's your event, it's your day. And I just want to make sure that it reflects you and that everybody enjoys it. So what's one of the best ideas that you've either come up with or seen for personalizing a wedding? And things coming to mind that was really kind of... <laughs> that I did, I'm sure there is, hold on. <laughs> Meanwhile, that. Charlotte Bell is saying hi, Bruce. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I haven't seen her in ages. <laughs> Facebook Live is, is now where you. I love it. I'm going to have to do this every night. Now. <laughs> um, but I won't have a life. <laughs> it's, I think the personal elements that we do. It's just the different touches yes. and and. I remember it's, you telling me once, even it's just about having pashminas at the right time through. Exactly, I love that exactly. We yeah. did. We did an event two years ago. Um, we had a, it was a series of four days. We did four separate parties. One night was at Kensington Palace, at the Orange Tree outside. We had fireworks just before guests went outside for fireworks. We had these guards, royal guards, walk around and hand out pashminas to the ladies so that they could cover. But the pashminas were folded so that the little label that had the bride and groom's name and the wedding date was oh, the first thing that they saw when they were handed that's us. Such a lovely but idea. then it's, you know, different elements. What was I, I was just thinking of something. I think even from the food, you know, look at what you love. And it doesn't have to be, you know, casual or something. But I think, you know, kosher caterers today are so much more creative and can really do anything. And, Absolutely. you know, if you want pizza, <laughs> as we've talked about before, but, you know, have a pizza bar at the end of the night, you know, yes. late in the evening yes. and just do something creative that means something to you that people will remember and might be slightly different than the norm. Oh, well, that's... You don't have to go crazy and, and reinvent the wheel, really. Uh, absolutely. Um, and it really is just kind of having the confidence to do things your way. Listen to... Sorry, you know, I keep reading these. Oh, yeah. We've got so many lovely... Um, Hila, hello from LA. I love a food truck. We are having a kosher food truck at our wedding. Can't wait. Tell us about food trucks. It's like the thing now, right? It really is. I think <laughs> depending on the venue, if you can, if it fits, you know, if you're in a London five-star hotel ballroom and, you know, maybe don't bring the food truck in, but maybe have it parked outside as guests are leaving so that they can grab something to go. So personalize those takeaway boxes or packaging and they just take that home with them and eat them in the taxi. And Hila says she's also having a popsicle truck. How fun. Nice. Oh, they do those, um, what is it, the, po the champagne popsicles yeah. that they can brand as well. Anything is brandable. And just before we close brandable? this segment, I, Robbie, do you want to come on and say hi to Caroline? You don't have to, but um, Robbie, lovely Caroline's husband, arrived, and it's so great to see you, and, and maybe later after a drink. Um, We've got, um, Sophie says, great advice. We're having one large monogram embroidered into the hanging of our chuppah. So Beautiful. exciting. Beautiful. Yeah. We've done that. Uh, we've done it on the dance floor. We've done it on linen napkins. You know, there's really the touch points that people pick up and might not see, but, you know, it just it's a continuity throughout. And just quickly, we've got a few seconds left. We're just going to read Christine's comment. She says, we once found a couple's favorite cake recipe from Holiday in Cyprus to incorporate into their wedding cake. It's Perf also very perfect. Personal. Yeah, she's perfect. A it's cake all designer. of the collection of those little things that really help make it unique. Well, we're going to have to close our segment. I'm short and sweet tonight, but um, 
you want more of Bruce, he's going to be doing lots of great sessions inside the VIB club. And you can also find out more about Bruce and his work. And we'll put something in the comments or at the top. I've, I'm lost now with what we've posted and what we haven't posted. <laughs> we'll post more. <laughs> we'll post more. But Thank I'm sorry you. it's all so short and sweet tonight because I had to pack so much in. But I'll be back. And you're going to stay yes. for some music now. We've got So the next segment, we'll be back at 6 o'clock in five minutes for a music segment. Um, basically all about how to pick the perfect music for your Jewish wedding. It's a big one, we get asked that a lot. So we've got a whole half an hour on that. So get your questions ready and we'll be back in five minutes. Bye. Okay, we're back and we are live with Johnny Moseson and Jamie on piano for a Jewish wedding music special. Both girls I've known that I'm lonesome Till I first met you I was lonesome when I saw you inside, all oh, my heart grew light, and this whole world is new to me. Really swell, I hate to admit you. Some expressions that really fit you. Though I racked my brain, hoping to explain all the things that you do to me. I'm mean, Mr. Shane, please let me explain. I'm mean, here, Mr. Shane, is that your brand? Ain't no one coming. Oh, yeah. I'm mean, here. Mr. Shane, what can I will explain? It means you're, you're the fairest in the land. I could say, Bella, Bella, he'd say, hey, but no part. Each language only helps me say how grand you are. I try to explain, I'm here, Mr. Shane. So kiss me, say that you understand. We've already had a long song. Say again. We've already had a lovely song. Yeah, it's great. Can we carry on? Yeah, we can. Oh. <laughs> We're about time, so I know. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you. <laughs> So, here we are with Johnny Moseson and Jamie on piano, and we are live from my home in London. We're doing the whole Smashing Summit from my home. And there's so many people working behind the scenes here making it happen. My husband, lovely clever and smashing the glass. There's a million people here having fun as well. So, this segment is all about how to pick the perfect music for your Jewish wedding. Johnny was the first person I thought of, the second person, the third person to do this segment because he knows his stuff, and he was the Hazan of my wedding. Can you believe that? <laughs> so, so, yeah, we don't have that long. Mm -hmm. um, we've got 15, 20 minutes, including music. So what would you like to start off by? What's your best, what's the most important to think about when choosing your perfect wedding music, if I can say such? I way? always say it's just to, um, you know, to pick something that you're totally connected to, you know, and something that you feel inside, um, you know, not worrying about, you know, what's going to fit or what's going to work, you know, what the audience is going to think or, you know, it's just what you connect to. And, you know, I, I, that's, that's the advice I'm going to give. Love it, love so it. Advice. Yeah, and should I ask you another question? Do you want to do another song? What do you want to... You can ask me another question. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Another and also, please, if you've got any questions on your wedding music, you want a hint for a, a tip for a song, or you want to ask Johnny something, you want to ask me something, we are just here to help tonight during the summit. And you'll also see at the end of the title, it says hashtag smashing summit. If you click on that hashtag, you'll see all the segments. We've got 12 mm. segments. We've got running on through to late in the night. So, so the other question I want to ask you, because can the sort of traditional Jewish music be customised or modernised or kind of put a twist on it, or is it kind of traditional or alternative? Is, is there kind of something in between, if you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a trend of uh, sort of people picking modern songs now, um, you know, putting very all the traditional words on there. Um, so I think there's, it's, it's, it's always evolving, that's what I've realised. It's not staying in one place, and people are always looking for different things. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, but you know, I try, I try and uh, offer a, a, a combination of things. So you can either pick something um, quite Israeli orientated, or something a bit like Carly Bach, very sort of rootsy, or something totally modern, um, you know, like Shweki and, and people like that. Um, absolutely. So why don't we go into a song that you think would be a, a potentially great song for Chopa? Just before you do, yeah. Sophie said Johnny is singing for our Chopa. So excited. So oh, wow. Nathan. Sophie, I'm looking forward to this November, is it? I think it's November. Yeah. And Mandy Kopolov says, love this. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. You've just got loads of lovely comments <laughs> really? coming in. Right. Um, so yeah, what, what do you think? What yeah, tell us so about I'm this? I'm just going to call the guitar. 
Um, so um, this song is a Karl Bach song, a Karl Bach song which I um, am very much connected to his melodies. You know, he was known as the singing rabbi. Uh, he brought a lot of the uh, people back to Judaism, um, and uh, yeah, he just wrote an amazing melody. So this is uh, this is one that I sing it called by. It's called Le Malachai Verai. Jennifer, she says, I would really love to walk down the aisle to Boy Kala, but not to a modern pop song. Are there any traditional Israeli examples you can direct me to of Boy Kala? Um, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, that is on the spot. Uh, there's, I mean, it depends how traditional you're talking. I mean, there's, um, there's the Shweki version, um, which we can just do the Yeah. We can just do a little, a little sort of snippet of it. Boy, be shallow, a little Camberina It's, you know, it's not super traditional. There is the old sort of uh, um, 
Shabbat song, Lecha Dodi, Likrat Kala, Pene Shabbat Lekavla, and that Boy Kala comes from that, that song. So if you want to go really traditional, you can sing part of that song, I guess. And Johnny's obviously a big part of our VIB club, so we'll do much more bigger sessions, and he's here to help inside the VIB club. So if you haven't yet heard, we've launched our amazing new members club, a private members club for Jewish and Jewish brides. It's all online, um, it's all done virtually, but there's so many amazing benefits. If you click on the link above, you can read all about it. Um, and this is why we're doing the Smashing Science tonight, to sort of celebrate this exciting Very launch. Um, Anastasia <clears throat> is asking, how can we incorporate music in the, I think we'll take one more question. Yeah. Want to get how can we incorporate music in the ceremony itself? We are having a Jewish wedding, and not sure if some prayers can be sung, or if there's a time for music break, or anything like it. Good question today. Yes. You put me on the um, We don't have to answer no, that. No, 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 that's okay. I don't mind. Um, yeah, in terms of, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be fixed. You can, you can. Especially with a Jewish. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I have sung at some some of those sorts of weddings, and um, you know, I've sung completely modern songs that don't even necessarily have um, sort of um, Hebrew words on to them. Um, so you know, there's no hard and fast rule. I think you can just be creative with it. Um, but, you know, if you were to join the VIP club, you'd probably get a bit more information. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> VIP, very important. Sorry, VIP, right. sorry. It was a B, but it was just a, a, a silent B. <laughs> So what, what are you going to say? Everyone, I cannot tell you, we've all got tingled. There's loads of people in here. We're all just, aren't we lucky having this? Yes. Yeah. I think it is amazing. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. What do you think? Was a, Next song. Yeah, tell us right. a bit about it. Okay, so, um, so this is always a poignant part of the chuppah. Um, I feel like we're sort of, uh, again, pressed for time. So we're going to jump a bit further down the line to the chuppah. So just before you break the glass, um, we sing Imesh Bachech Yerushalayim. Uh, which means if, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let me forget my right hand. So we always remember, uh, even during times of happiness, we remember uh, the destruction of the temple, uh, when it sort of takes away the evil eye. So this is Imesh Kachach Yerushalayim. And um, yeah, watch out for the next segment. We're actually doing live glass smashing, and amazing Lauren, our resident DIY expert, is going to be making something live on air with that glass. Oh. Okay, lovely. Great. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so I thought we could um, do, uh, this could be a song towards for a bride, so um, this is Erev Shosh Shoshanim, which is a sort of folk, Israeli, Israeli folk song. So, you know, you have different styles, you have sort of modern uh, religious songs, and you have sort of folk, um, more Zionist type songs. Um, so this one's Erev Shosh Shoshanim. <laughs> so moving I would be a weeping mess at my wedding <laughs> and she's not even Jewish I know Catherine um, and yeah Anastasia's saying am I the only one that's nearly crying oh, thank you. imagine under the, under the John yeah as I say Johnny was if you missed it Johnny was the chazana near my husband's wedding and uh, yeah one of the best best decisions ever a very long um uh, do you want me to go into a very long question or do yeah, you want to yeah, say yeah. Something? okay yeah. Jeanette's saying hi Karen and Johnny this segment is beautiful but has me freaking out a bit. <laughs> I'm having a Jewish ceremony, but our ceremony musicians are not Jewish. They are able to, they are able to learn new music for us. But I'm questioning how well a non-Hebrew speaking musician can pull off anything close to this. <laughs> how, and she's, I think she's USA based, but you can correct me, Jeanette. Otherwise, I'd say just get Johnny. Um, how can I incorporate Jewish music without a Jewish stroke Israeli band? Great question. Um, okay, in terms of the actual musicians, it really shouldn't make a difference. You know. Professional musicians be able to read scores, so it doesn't make a difference. It's essentially the singing, um, and that's tricky um, because um, maybe pronunciation might be tricky. But you know, I guess some people are able to do it. Um, so I hope that. Don't get the real answers. professionals yeah. can do it. Have it out with your have it out with your band, air it with them, um, and see what they say, and then you'll make a good decision. Go with your gut instinct. If it really doesn't feel right, lose your deposit and book someone else. But. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take yeah, we're going to have got time for one more song, Johnny, but then you are, Johnny is going to be in the next segment singing Simitop Mozatov, so good for us. So what, what should we close with? Yeah, so let's do, let's do um, something, just an upbeat song. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is not really exclusively for the chuppah, this is more sort of a, just an upbeat dance, uh, dancing tune. We are going to do a sort of medley um, once you smash the glass, but this is just a, a one song that we're going to do that's quite upbeat, um, as we for the Israeli dancing as well. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
something, something, something. Something, something in your shoulder. Something, something, something. Something that in your shoulder. Something, something, something. Something, something in your shoulder. Something, something, something. Something that in your shoulder. in 10 minutes, just under 10 minutes at 6.30 UK time, 1.30 Eastern, um, to, uh, on to our next segment, which is how to personalise your chuppah, the actual creative bit of the chuppah, and what to do with your smashed glass. And we've got, we're going to be smashing a glass live, and it's going to be amazing. And Johnny's going to be singing. So, just say thank you to Jamie as well. Amazing. 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 Again, if you want more of Johnny, he's going to be diving so much deeper with music and all that kind of stuff inside the VIB club, which is our brand new members club for brides. We've got for Jewish and Jewish brides specifically. First of its kind in the world. And we've got a special launch price for the first 100 members. So I'm not sure. I know we've already had um, quite a few people sign up. So if you want that, if you want to get it at the special launch price, hit that buy button right now because I'd hate for you to miss on that. So all the, all the, um, <laughs> all the details are in the link above. So we'll be back here shortly for the next segment. See you soon. Hi, everybody. We are back for, is it the third segment now of the Smashing Summit? Third out of, isn't it third or fourth? Four. The fourth segment out of 12. We've got 12 segments. We are going on late into the night, covering absolutely everything you need to know to plan your wedding. And I've got with me lovely Lauren. Hello. Um, she is our resident DIY expert at Smashing the Glass, and she's a big part of the VIB club, which we've just launched. So exciting. I know. Our, our brand new... Um, the first of its kind, an online private members club for Jewish and Jewish brides, where you get loads of benefits, discounts, gifts, um, a community of women. There's all sorts of stuff. Click on the link to find out more. And you also get one of these for under the chuppah. And you can see this has got a glass in it. Here we go. We're going to do a live smashing of the glass. Um, we've got a celebrity guest. <laughs> 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 We've got a celebrity guest to smash it live on air. And then lovely, hi Debbie, great to see you. Hi Lisa, hi Anastasia. We've got, um, by the way, also, before I talk about what Lauren's going to do, please comment and share and tell everyone about this amazing summit because we want to help as many people as we can. And um, this segment is going to be really fun because our celebrity guest <laughs> is, going to, <laughs> is going to smash it in a second. And then lovely Lauren here is going to... Have you got your gloves on yet? She's not got yet. Got a special I'm DIY waiting. gloves. They're not very glamorous. They're not very <laughs> wedding appropriate. <laughs> she's going to pop them on and she's going to live on air, on camera, make something amazing out of your smashed glass because we know that you want to keep your glass often. I mean, my husband's and I glass, I have no idea where it got to or where it went because it wasn't wrapped in anything properly. How cool are these smashed glass pouches? And also I heard a... Um, one of the photographers I worked with told me that she got a shard of glass in her knee once oh. under the chuppah because it wasn't wrapped properly, it was in a serviette. So you need one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and you can only get one if you're a VIB. All the details are at the top. Um, so we're going to smash the glass. Lauren's going to make something amazing and show you how you can do it yourself. And we're also going to talk about um, how to personalize your chuppah. So if you've got any questions about that, about any aspect of the Jewish wedding, about... Johnny's segment before about anything. We are just here to help and we really, really value your comments and anything you, you have to say we want to hear. Only nice things. <laughs> so, yeah, our celebrity guest is the amazing... 
Bruce Knuckle. Bruce has never smashed a glass. This is a first for me. Yeah, so, so it's a world exclusive, isn't it? It is. So let's get the microphone down on the glass. Let me see if I can feel it. Hang on, where should I put it there? Let me see so you guys at home can see. Uh, move my arm out of the way. Okay. Tell Give me it why. all you've got, Bruce. Treat. You need one of these pouches in your life. Um, so let us. How are we going to do this? We can put it on here. So let's start. Let's see how okay. See so I will be the ledge person. I love making things out of glass. I love making things full stop. But <laughs> there are some really, really easy. Oh, I'm going to pick out some of the really big bits because I'm going to make a piece of art in literally a few minutes. So this is something that. People can do it at home as well. Um, Lauren, obviously, you can get a professional to do it. But all what I love about all Lauren's ideas is she's a DIY expert and she can show you how to do things yourself. We've got an amazing blog post on Smashing the Glass about how to um, design and build an amazing chuppah at home by yourself. So she is our DIY expert. And um, Lauren is obviously also our DIY expert inside the VIB club where she'll be doing DIYs from decor on the tables to basically whatever you want. If you've got an idea for a DIY, tell us and we'll do a live segment inside the club exactly how to do that DIY. So we're really and excited I love to have Lauren on board. I love a chuppah as well. So I have like, I have a massive Pinterest board full of chuppot. Yes. And I'm going super mad at the moment. So I've got loads of ideas for lots of different things you could do to personalise your chuppah as well. Well, Anastasia is saying, I hope we can get some tips on how to build your own chuppah in the VIB club. Definitely. Yes. I think I that goes without one. a doubt. I mean, even something like the dimensions, you know, um, we I designed our chuppah and I had no idea of the actual dimensions of the yeah. chuppah and all those kind of little details. Um, so Lauren will be there to help. Um, Marcy's saying, Karen, you all look like you're having way too much fun loving your segments. It really is great fun, isn't everyone? (laughs) We need to do this regularly. I'm Um, just going to explain what I'm doing and what I've got. I've got some glue, which you can use anything. I like this one because it dries clear. So all I do is, this is like the most simple one you could actually possibly do. So yeah, there's there's about so many ideas that you can do with your glass that we're going to show you. (laughs) But this one literally is... This is so easy and people think... Oh, I can't be bothered to do anything, but I you'll see how quick it is and how easy it is and how you can build it up. And then I'll show you an example of something I made for the actually for the blog post that we had. Was that in April, I think it was? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah. This is so buildable. So like you can do it like I like it with when you have really coloured full glass, which I'll show you in a second. There's we've so got we've things. got some here, some we made earlier to show yeah. you in a minute. And we put glue on it. And in terms of the chuppah, I know it's a hot topic for our brides. Where do, where do people start with wanting to personalise their, their chuppah? Where, what's the good I think there's, point? there's so many different things that you can take into consideration. So some people really like to have a really floral chuppah, which I think is great. But if you're trying to think something a little bit different, something that's not necessarily um, floral-based, um, this is going against everything I ever thought I'd say as well, by the way, because I was a bit, flowers were like the biggest thing for me at my wedding. Um, but if you don't want to have flowers for any reason whatsoever, then um, 
there are so many things you can do. So one of the things that I think is a really nice idea is to have your guests get involved. Now, a lot of people mm. always do the... Um, they sort of send out before the wedding with their invitation something that they can... Um, something that they... You know, like a, a scrap of material a that everybody square. personalizes, yes. and then That's somebody lovely. will bring that all together and then say sew it all together like a big quilt and then it's something that they can keep which I absolutely love but a lot of people are doing it so I always think that I want to do something this is the way that I work I always want to do something a little bit different to everybody else so one of the things I'm just going to get some more glass as we talk uh, so one of the things that I like to I like doing is using that idea but changing it so I thought you know how some people always want to have like a um like a get like a gift like a what's it called when everybody signs it I guess a guest book why don't you make your papa your guest book? So why that. don't you have some like fabric pens that are really not, like you can get some really nice fabric pens. Get some really amazing fabric pens. And as people, if this works really well if you're having a handheld papa as well. Yeah. And if you have like, you bring, if, as everybody walks in, you ask, I, I ask my guests to come about half an hour early thinking Jewish meantime, everybody's going to come a little bit late. <laughs> and they did. Um, but I asked everybody to come a little bit early but why don't you use that early time when people are arriving to um set to um sign your chuppah and Absolutely. then you so it's like a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a better version than a, than a gift it's book. a live guest book chuppah. yeah I've and then you I keep that. that and then you have all these amazing messages from your friends and your family and you can actually keep it and and it's personal I, for me a chuppah is um like you'll see if you read the post that I said is that for, every, for, a chup, for everybody a chuppah might mean something different, but for me personally, I um, it for me it was like um, the symbol of my friends and family being with me in my first home with my husband. Okay. That's what I took from that. And what did you do for your chuppah? So we had um, my husband and I made it the week before the wedding with my mother down my head, my, my neck saying, you haven't done it yet, you haven't done it yet, <laughs> and going crazy with me. But I knew we were going to do it in time. So we had um, really light fabric that was sort of very lightweight, and we sort of double-sided it. And on one piece of it, I wish I put that there, on one piece of it, we, um, we had like transfer pictures that we'd got from, we'd collected photos from my husband's fa like life before he met me, from my life before he met me, and um, there's baby photos. There, there are a lot of baby yeah. photos. There are lots of. We also that was the way that we included people that weren't with us or weren't able to be with, not just family that had passed away, but also friends that couldn't be there. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, um, and I'll explain it in a moment. Do you want to put it down because it tries? Otherwise, you're standing there sure. holding it for ages. We'll, we'll reveal it in a minute. I could take off my very unglamorous gloves. Lauren's um, copper design, we will, we will post it yeah. in the comments after. And it, so yeah. we had, so we had lots of photos and it was like kind of Polaroid style and it was, they were like really, um, personal to us and everybody then, we knew that we wanted it somehow involved <laughs> later in the wedding and we told the, the venue staff where we had our wedding were amazing and they, um, we said, can you just prop it up against the wall so people can go and have a look at it and you'll see it on the, like, they basically moved it because we had a sweetheart table. They moved it to over our table. Oh, that's a lovely So we were, when we were eating, we were sitting under this. And it did have a lot of flowers at that point because then I was really flower mad. <laughs> and everybody said it was like, it looked like a little bit of an oasis in the middle of a wedding. See, and it was That's so, a great it, tip as well. Yeah. If you're having a sweetheart table, yeah. maybe put it under yeah, your Yeah, and it, it was just, uh, we didn't know it was happening. We walked in f for dinner when everybody announced us. And it was like the shock of our lives. It was amazing. And because we'd worked so hard on it and to see something that we'd worked on. We also had um, birch poles um, stuck in metal buckets. I've perfected a better way to do it, though, now, much better than... <laughs> Lauren's actually, she was one of our real blogging brides, and then I saw how amazing and talented she was, and I put her in touch with some brides to make their chuppas, and now you've just started an amazing yeah. business called the Chuppa Design Company. But we'll do another Facebook Live properly with, with Lauren, all about chuppa stuff. These are all kind of teaser segments. Yeah. But... Um, Shall I show you? Yeah, let's yeah, show some of these. So... What I've just made is, it, don't it's hold right. it up because it's like, um, I'll show you this version of it because okay. this is probably more, it's complete. Oh. Um, we, this is what I made for when we did, I did a blog post about smashing the glass and what I would have done with the other one if I had a bit more time is that I would have written something like we smashed the glass and that was the date of our wedding and you could do like literally any shape you want on any piece of wood and all you would, all I would do is that I haven't done it yet, but what I would do is I'd just hang a piece of, um, like, 
um, picture frame wire on the back, and then it's it can go on my wall. And it literally doesn't take a minute. You need a glue. You can see glass. how quick that's taken me. Yeah. And I mean, we'll granted, it's not the most beautiful yet. I think it is. But I can, I'm going to work on it. It's a shame we can't see it so because of the light, but. Yeah. We all, we I'll all take some photos of it and post them later. But that's one thing. This was something that, like, this is probably the quickest and easiest thing to make. And can you, you show it on a bit closer? So you you can literally personalise. It's like a memory jar. And I've got lots of glass in here and some paper that was wrapped up, which was a present that my parents bought me for my wedding. So I put the wrapping paper from that in there and a little bit of fabric that I'd been saving for it. And then. Not not as visible, but you could put it in a more visible place. Is that I put the these were also handmade actually. The place cards of my, from oh, my husband nice. and I. Um, from is that upside down? Yeah. So we put our my place cards in there, which we had from our wedding. So there's like it's like a jar full of like little really? things like that. You your place cards you just sort of have in a box, but actually you put it into something that you can actually display. like display. You can make and you can use anything. So like a bit of fabric from that was tying your bouquet around or anything like that. Um, my personal favourite, because this was the most time consuming, sorry, jingles, is, and it's really nice in the light, which, and it really, it works really differently, you can see it's been sitting on my uh, shelf, is this um, wind chime. This is a little bit more complicated to make, but if you have a trusty Dremel, which is my favourite new toy, you can, you can and, and you, with a couple of Google um, searches to find out how to drill a tiny hole into a bit piece of glass you can make something like this I got this driftwood just off of eBay it was so cheap for loads of bits of this and I've got loads left to make other things I actually think it's quite nice to make with anything when you don't have smash glass but this was quite easy with some jewellery wire and some jewellery bindings I like that and so I put the jingling down now so many ideas and these are the ones you like these ones didn't you I love the idea of a keyring because I want to kind of like maybe one for me and one for my husband yeah and... so I you can do these in any way so this See if the best way to have these are the necklaces. Am I doing this? In? So Lauren actually DIY'd these, and she's going to be showing you inside the bee club how you can make them yeah. as well. So these what these are um, some resin. Um, I suppose they're resin jewelry because I started it by doing jewelry, and then I was like, realised I had loads of um, spare um, key rings, and I thought actually that'd be quite nice, and I could hand one over. So if you can, I don't know if you can see, but inside there's. Little, these are really good for the tiny bit. You know how you have those tiny bits of glass that I, I wouldn't be able to put onto here. Um, tiny bits of glass, um, and you can just pop them into resin. It's a little bit complicated. You have to follow instructions, but as long as you can follow the instructions, there's no problems. And then here's some Julian. And I got a silicone mold, which um, just it is much easier than doing it without silicone, I can tell you, with a bit of practice. <laughs> And you just sort of mix it all up. You mix up two parts of the same thing. And then, um, yeah, and then you plop it in and then you pour more resin on top. It's so, it's so, it's actually really easy. It's just a little bit time consuming, that's all. Easy but time consuming. Um, do you want me to show the final one? Yeah, do, do, do. The last one, Ooh. which I think is the, st the most sort of stylish, because I put a black and white photo in. This is, tried to get the right angle right. This is, again, really similar to the piece of art, but you can incorporate the moment that somebody smashes the glass. And this is a picture from our wedding, and then I've put the dates at the bottom, and then just sort of draped. The colour themes for ours were pretty much pinks and sort of deep reds. Um, so I thought that was quite a nice sort of way of Lovely. tying it in. So well. many amazing ideas. Um, Jessica's saying such a great keepsake. Gemma Jade. Hi, Gemma Jade. Lovely to have you. Looks great, and you look gorgeous, Karen. Thank you. Um, Rabbi Andrea, who's a, one of our resident rabbis inside the VRB Club, she's New York based. She's amazing. Hi, Rabbi Andrea. She's saying the smash the glass patch is one of the best gifts and essentials to have on your wedding day for breaking the glass. And I actually forgot to show. We've got this um, lovely. Where is it? I haven't even got it. It's not working. Anyway, oh, we have. Never mind. There, we've got a lovely little flat lay that shows the actual glass, and we've also got. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll do all that in a minute. But um, I wanted to show you something else that I forgot to show earlier. But we're having way too much fun yeah. with Lauren and her DIYs. Um, and I have had another chuppah idea, actually. Come on. This has been playing around in my head all day <laughs> because uh, I have no use for my wedding dress anymore. I'm not ever going to wear it again. And I was thinking, how amazing it would be to create a keepsake for my whole family, for the generations, and take the chuppah, take the canopy... Out of the um, 
right, like the bits of the dress. You okay. could either like piece it together, or you, if you've got a dress as big as mine, you could spread it all out and probably would make a hooper actually. Probably. Oh, I love that. Idea. You're just, just uh, you're just an ideas. Um, I do keep having like that's my problem. Too many ideas. Idea generator. You are. <laughs> I do have too many um, ideas. Um, Robin is saying hi, Karen and Lauren. Hi, Anastasia. Did you colour the glass somehow? No, I got. I went and got some coloured glass, and you can get them from IKEA. Do some pretty good colour glass. The one thing I'd say about some, your, the glass that you smash, you don't want it to be too thick because then you risk it not smashing. So well done, Bruce. Yeah. That was quite. That's quite a thick glass. Well, it knocked looked, it out of the park. Yeah. Bruce. So like the thicker the glass, the, the more risk there is. But um, which I found out when I was making the blog post, and I was trying to smash a lot of glass in a short space of time. But is it? You could just get so many different colours. You can buy online, like, really beautiful, ornate ones, and then you can send them off to somebody to get them recast. There was somebody that posted in I the group the Jason, other day. Jason Blair, I'm not sure. Yeah. There's some really nice, like, people that sort of fuse the glass together into a mezuzah, or we saw a bowl, didn't we, that, that was, oh, that, yeah, that was so lovely beautiful. as well. And there's so many different things that you could do, and other people that can go and make things for you as well. Um, I just need to make something for myself because <laughs> otherwise I feel like I've done something wrong. <laughs> well, so, well, on that note, uh, Robin's asking, she works at Rosewood London, she's saying the whole team at Rosewood London want to know what's the turnaround time if they want to give these as gifts? Is this after, I'm assuming this is after the wedding. Yes. The turnaround. Is it, I think if, if, is it if you want Lauren to actually do the work for you? Is that what you, I, I guess that's Do you know what? I haven't made smashed glass art for anybody yet, but I'm always open to new ideas. Um, if you're making it yourself, you could do it in a night and have it ready 24 hours later as soon as the, the glue's cured. Mm -hmm. This could, this will be touch ready. When, when, when can I show it? In, so in a half an hour or an hour? You might be able to now. Yeah, you might be able to now. It's, it's very similar. It's see, right the thing is, right. is that yeah. we can see all the pinkness of it. It's really nice. It's beautiful. And it doesn't look like much at the moment. But, you, but if you sort of, we'll you could shape it into a heart. I'll put it a bit further back. The lighting doesn't work. Anyway, it's gorgeous. The problem of glass and technology. <laughs> Lighting. But yeah, um, so many ideas. It's like, honestly, I, you could literally, I had loads of ideas. I remember when we were talking about it, I came up with, you can make a clock, you can make a mosaic out of oh the glass. God. So many things. Lauren is an ideas generator, and um, she is here in, for the VIB club to do DIYs on anything you need. I know you had some DIY decor ideas for table centers, yeah. as well as the kind of Jewishy stuff. So we're really excited. Yeah, we're really, we're, we're talking about a, like a DIY, like how to DIY your Ketubah as well. Even if you've got no artistic skills? Even if, if yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. On the spot. Um, no, no I know that you're, you, you. I try, I do things as simply as possible, or, or something that I can easily teach myself to do, so that anybody can do it. So I just wanted to okay. show everyone this slide which shows you what you get if you join the VIB club. So you get the weekly online bridal masterclasses, like ones with Lauren, but we've got a whole host of experts on all the burning topics you need to know about. You get a 10% discount or an exclusive gift from hundreds of vendors, handpicked from my trusted vendor network. Direct access to me. I wanna help you plan your wedding. I'm gonna be constantly on hand for you. Fortnightly Ask the Rabbi sessions. We've got some ama two amazing rabbis who are the most inclusive, non-judgmental rabbis going, um, who will help you with any questions you have. Um, bespoke advice to your wedding. Um, uh, wedding hashtag masterminds will come with your perfect wedding hashtag. Of course, you get a smash glass pouch, which you cannot get um, on the moon anywhere unless you're a <laughs> unless you're a VIB. Only members are going to have those. And access to our secret VIB Facebook community filled with a group of group of really awesome like-minded women and the price in pounds so yeah we've got a special launch price for the first 100 members it's normally 70 pounds it's going to be 60 pounds just for the first 100 members and i know that they are um going already so please be quick if you want that price and in dollars it's normally 97 it's going to be 85 dollars for our first 100 members and the link to find out all about it and buy a membership is just a bus so excited. I'm so excited. I am too. That was so much fun. Thank yeah. you. And I'll make sure I put some pictures up. I'll take some proper photos in the daylight with no yes, flashlights. We want to see yeah. this. It is really beautiful. I'll put some photos up tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll give it to Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. 
Um, so we're going to have to close this segment now because we're nearing 7 o'clock. We've got another amazing segment for you. If you click on the hashtag Smashing Summit after the title, you can see all the segments at once. So we've got 12 amazing segments um, all about everyone. We all want to help you plan your Jewish wedding or Jewish wedding your way. And we're here to answer questions and comments. So the next segment is all about food, getting creative with your food and drink at your wedding. And we've got the executive chef from Food Story, David Swan, and we've got the managing director, Matt Ricard, two amazing, amazing people that are going to change up what you thought about wedding food and what you can do and all the latest ideas and ask your questions in the comments. So come back in five minutes for our next segment. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> We are back again. What number is this, Claire? Number five? About five out of 12 amazing segments all about how to plan your Jewish or Jewish wedding your way. Um, we are talking all about creative food and drink ideas with Matt. No, this is mirror image. I'm getting confused. Yeah, it's not helping, is it? I'm Matt. <laughs> I'm Matt, though. Matt. MD of Food Story and David, the very talented executive chef, uh, are here with me to tell you all about the incredible um, creative food and drink ideas. They are kosher caterers, but we are here to answer all your questions about anything to do with uh, creative food and drink. Don't feel left out if you're not having a kosher wedding and you're not thinking of having a kosher wedding. I didn't have a kosher wedding and I still get inspired by these guys. You're food Thank experts, you. aren't you? Um, before, we, before we dive in, um, I just want to say that we are doing this live as part of the Smashing Summit. At the end of the title, see that hashtag Smashing Summit, and then you can see the whole, uh, all the segments together. Um, we're doing the summit to celebrate the launch of our VIB club, our brand new members club for brides. Um, first of its kind in the world, it's a um, club for Jewish and Jewish brides. We're here, we want to help you plan your wedding, your way. And there's so many amazing things on offer. Um, have a click in the link to see what it's all about. So, um, so what, what do we need to think about when it comes to catering? First of all, Karen, I've got a gift for you. Oh, lovely. Why didn't the other guests give me, give me a gift? Well, we're the first caterer on the scene, so uh, <laughs> another one for your collection. Thank you. Hi, Sasha. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Sasha. Don't be jealous. Okay, any guesses, guys? Badge, it badge smells the front of this car. Oh, oh, yeah, badge the front of this car. Beautiful, beautiful candle. Can I just say, these guys... You can't keep that, by the way. We need to take that back. Oh, no, you're not taking it back. This is mine. <laughs> these guys There's a gave wick me, for everyone. These guys gave me a candle for Rosh Hashanah, which was, is just the one wick, and it's still burning. We use it every night. It's quality stuff, isn't it? Thank you. What's this fragrance? It's beautiful. Uh, cognac, yeah, cognac, ode, and... Uh, we need smell vision. third one, Max? Yeah, we need smell vision. We need that for the kitchen. Ooh, this is... Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we will be lighting that straight away in time for the next segment. So, so, where do we start? Where do we even start? Do we need to talk about food story? Do we? Yeah. Talk to the girls um, at home. Oh, yeah, I mean, let me... Yeah, yeah. First of all, we'll talk about food story briefly, mm -hmm. and then we want to make it really helpful. So, where can everyone find food story online? And tell us... Tell everyone a little bit about, okay. about food story. So, yeah. So, we'll bookend it. Um, yes. Start with www.foodstory.co.uk. No yeah. <laughs> www I thought uh, you would do story. Yeah, no, we're not that slick. <laughs> do it again in a minute. <laughs> exactly. um, so we're a kosher caterer now in our fourth year, um, and we really have sort of trailblazed the, the kosher industry, but actually really interestingly for us, um, I think we've stood out in the events industry as a whole in London. Um, and what we've done is brought a team together that really is um, bringing influence from outside kosher. And um, I think that's probably what's really changed up what we do. Um, I mean, yeah, you've really taken the, not just England, but the world by storm with what you're yeah. doing. Um, and we're going to show some amazing... Can I just show one to start with? Okay. Go on. Which one are you going to show? What's this about? <laughs> David, that was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, this was actually for a very special bar mitzvah we did. Uh, and so this is a take one. It says swim and tonic. Obviously, oh, brilliant. obviously a, a take on a gin and tonic, um, and our clients had a funfair themed bar mitzvah, um, and all the kind of a lot of the food actually, a lot of the food was uh, <laughs> themed and the drink, um, and so this is a gin and tonic in a bag, love it. which is absolutely amazing. Yeah. You see, I love. You see, I'm a I'm a creative, and um, you know, just seeing this stuff, just that's what. I, people want to see a wedding. So it's a one-off yeah. experience for your guests and make it different. Absolutely. And that's what, the, yeah. what you specialize in. It's your opportunity yeah. to personalize and customize your wedding. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what you've got to be, when you want to make uh, your event or your wedding creative, 
you don't have to try too hard. I think that's the really the key thing. So really look easy. around, look for inspiration, see what can you can move from the restaurant or the magazine or even at home into your wedding. Um, just one or two key personalizations. Yeah. And people remember it. And and how do you get personal with a menu? Because, I mean, for instance, again, for our wedding, we, I my, set my maiden name was Cinnamon, so we like bit of cinnamon flavored something somewhere or other but beyond that how do you get really personal with a wedding with a wedding um, what tips have you got for people where to start well it that's really interesting because often we're going through and you know, we should let david talk but people will get to the end of our first meeting with the caterer and they'll say have we forgotten anything and we'll often say you know is this wedding going to feel personal to you um are people going to turn up and go i know why they've chosen that canopy because it's karen's favorite Food, um, I or I know what. Hi, Robin. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> you um, tell me your mates to tune in. Or is it just a special, special, special might, might even be some Cornish hecklers there as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's really about will your rec your guests recognise why you've chosen the menu or the see drink? some personality yeah. coming across. Be that a drink, that. Yeah. some canapes, or perhaps mingles. Can one dessert. go overboard with that? Is there a limit? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And it's obviously also the caterer's responsibility to to kind of push back a little bit to yourself and just say you're perhaps trying too hard. Yes. You know, there needs to certainly be a certain amount of uh, safeness to the event, but obviously at Food Story, we try and push push the boundaries as much as we can. And do you find couples come to you with a theme that you have to incorporate? Can we just do a shout out to Rebecca Belson? Um, of course, great hi Rebecca. Ours. Hi Great Rebecca. Time you're watching, hi Rebecca. Uh, in fairness, Karen. Uh, no, I was gonna uh, say yeah. two thousand. Yeah. Do, do you get more people coming to you with um, here's our theme, why ideas have you got? Or well, people are like, we've not got enough. no idea, why ideas have you got? Not enough. And I think right. when we have that meeting with our clients and the brides and the grooms, if they came with um, perhaps a thread or some inspiration, then we can kick and also off the you can be well, like you could have a kind of, I don't know, Paris theme. Don't think yeah. it has to be just colours. You know, of any kind of thing that feels and, right. And even, guys even just their, their favourite restaurant. And I think, Matt, obviously, we spoke about this, sort of about making some notes about your favourite restaurants. What food do you like to eat? Mm. You know, if they were to come to your house for a dinner party, what would you serve? Is it always chocolate mousse? Um, and we can just play some of this into the menu. And then as Matt said, at least your guests will recognize this is definitely, you know, Abby's event or whoever's event because they can see by the, the touches that we've put in throughout their menu. Absolutely. Um, Anastasia is saying, we are having a bohemian wedding, so we'll personalize our menu by using lots of edible flowers. Delicious. A yeah. little bit harder <laughs> in terms of the kosher market, having the flowers uh, kosher, they need to be washed. But it absolutely, really? absolutely, it can but be done. I know done. you do anything. We do. Yeah, we we, we try as boundaries. much as we can. We try to push the boundaries. So flowers are absolutely beautiful. I mean, obviously, they're edible, add lots of color, lots of vibrancy. Yeah. So really nice touch. And, and um, you know, if you're going bohemian and you're going relaxed, and maybe this is where the caterer stands on the event planner's toes. But think about the caterer. The caterer can also change the way they lay the cutlery. Yes. You know, it's a small touch, but, yes. you know, it doesn't have to be fork, fork, knife, knife, fork, spoon. Oh, my God. You know, Do you follow think someone it. on Instagram called Casa de Perrier? No. Oh, my God. They, they probably follow Matt and I. Yeah. Is it Casa de Perrier? Yeah. The most yeah. incredible table. No, I mean, yeah. Yeah, seriously, wild inspiration. Yeah. And, yeah, people need to get creative. You're absolutely right. You Are we allowed to cater in Manchester? Very good question. Yes, what is the answer. Mean? Yeah, we, we have driver licenses and we'll travel, so we'll, we'll come... <laughs> LA is fine, and I LA, actually, Miami, and Manchester, we're good. I actually put these guys forward for a job, I don't know if they got it, where the couple, one of my consulting couples, they wanted an Israeli-style food, but it wasn't a kosher wedding. And you do non-kosher weddings too, right? Absolutely. No one needs to know it's kosher. Absolutely. And that, that could be a second USP, I suppose, yes. after being kosher. Yeah. Um, so if you've got any questions, put them put them out. Um, Matt and David are here to help, but I want to just show you them. Should we show them the... Should Please. we check or should we ask some questions? Yep. Yeah. Let's show them some of the stuff that you come up with. Um, hang on. Let me take the gin. We've what was that one, one called? Swim into our neck. So this is... So this is a freak shake and this has been, as Matt might have mentioned, really popular with both children and the adults. So obviously the kids love this. It keeps everyone entertained if that's a bar mitzvah really or a wedding. Yeah. But then certainly for the adults, we top this up with a little bit of alcohol. So you, it turns uh -huh. into a hard shake. We do, we do things like chocolate with Oreo, perhaps some coffee and then some whiskey. Oh, and we can do okay. different alcohols for the bride, you know, for the females and for the gentlemen. So really easy to customize it. Um, what's, what's my David's favorite, favorite dish? dish? Uh, very good question. Very Swedish, good question. I think. Swedish. Dutch, actually. Oh, Dutch. But um, yeah, so uh, the freak shake's really good to kind of customize. Um, great for kids, great for adults. Everyone enjoys them. 
The big thing with that is they're a lot of fun. You know, why have something boring and stuffy? The wedding should be a celebration. You're there with your friends and family. It's all about having fun. Uh, and I, always and I think say, the freak shakes are great um, for that. I always say throw in one or two surprises as well. It could be anything mm. from a sort of handwritten note on every place setting to a crazy idea like the freak shake. Mm. Um, um, Hi, Corinne. Lovely. Hi. So, uh, she's asking about our brand new concept. So today, actually, we've just posted on social media that we've started a brand new concept so called Social by Food Story. Um, and that's more of a, a party atmosphere, a relax. It's a little bit less formal, but more about having great food with your friends, uh, uh, lots like of great food and drink. It's more, it's more of a festival. Yeah. So think wedding, but less perhaps hotel. Um, and more just having a great yeah. party with your friends. And, and accessible, I think, is the point. And accessible with you know the same quality of food, the same quality of drink, the same Always people behind it. Always thinking outside the box, you guys. Yeah, yes. absolutely. But also, this particular product or... Hi, so, Corinne. Hi. Um, fits in well with perhaps um, venues which are less expensive, so sort of um, brick arches, stripped back absolutely. venues, and that's... Yeah. that's good. So we've actually put together a little package, and we found four or five venues that you can perhaps use... Um, you know, you can come in and have a chat with us, have a small meeting. Um, but it's it's a much more fun kind of wedding. If if the kind of are you saying that the other one isn't fun? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely, not. they, they all, everyone has their place. But if, yeah. uh, for the millennials, perhaps that are going to weddings every week at the same hotels, yes. if you want something a little bit yes. different, you know, come and talk to we're, us about social, about and that. we've got some great ideas of how we can transform I your wedding. I think people really are wanting to do something different. They yes. just don't know how. So it's great all the time. I mean, if you if you have these events week in week out, it's great to do something different. So. We've Hannah, got the answer. Hannah's asking, what's your best way to replace dairy if you're catering a meat event? Oh, that's our secret. Yeah, that, we've worked <laughs> three and a half years. We've been uh, developing these techniques and our team are working really hard it's to, a great secret to kind of operate yeah. dairy free. You know, you know, actually, I think it's the um, talent that we have in the kitchen. Yeah. Most of them have come from outside kosher where they've had dairy and it's about trying to get the dessert to the level that it can be um, or the food to the level it can be without the dairy. So they're just forever pioneering, I suppose, and pushing the boundaries. Yeah, I mean, it's all just about that continuous kind of improvement, as Matt yeah. says. So every day we're always trying to push the boundaries. If that's the food, the cut replacement, the drinks is in the gin and tonic, our bread offering. Every day we're just trying to improve something else so that, you know, at the end of the year we've come on uh, massively. So that's kind of what we're about. Um, someone's asking, how do couples choose between a sit-down meal and a buffet? Uh, that might be mine. I, you know, actually, I was going to talk about the format of a um, Jewish wedding. I think uh, generally we see people, certainly our clients, going to down towards the sit-down dinner. Um, it works when people are standing up and going to the buffet. It can be a little bit messy. Um, whilst it has a sociable element to it, if you're trying to get the formality with the buffet... Yeah, it, it is just, it's too much of a mix. And really, yes. you need people in their seats, to be honest, Karen. Uh, somebody just asked me if I'm single. That... Helena, I think, yeah, I think we can have a chat. I might be available, <laughs> I might be available later for a drink if you're around. Oh, there you go. Facebook Live dating. Um, so let's, we're going to look at, if, tell us more mm. about, I was interested, I tell you, Sean, I was interested. And I love, um, we've seen that. We've You've seen, seen that. that. Okay, so th this is really interesting, as we just talked about earlier, in terms of theming. So lots of our guests now just want something really simple and just done really well. So we feel that our food is more restaurant style, and yeah. this is a really elegant steak and chips. So a really good ribeye with a really good red wine jus. Simple. Lots of truffle, and, and then triple, tasty. triple cooked <gasps> chips with rosemary. Yeah. Um, it's become very popular more recently. Yeah. Um, so we found a lot of our guests leading towards this. And, and if you want to push your caterer or your hotel towards creativity, then I'd probably do it during the reception, the starter or the dessert and actually make the main course much more, as David say, restaurant style. Keep that solid and honest and, and, and play around in the other areas of the menu. And um, Robin's asking, what's the best and most creative dish you personally really like? I think I'll give that question to Matt. Robin, what are you doing to us? That's really tough. <laughs> um, I think at the moment... The Freak Shake, which we showed earlier on, whilst it's not wholly our own, it's something which has really captured imagination. It's so colourful. Yeah, yeah, fun. And it was, we put it on and the menus. Really Instagram yeah, we put it on the menus for the kids. <laughs> and that's, yeah. And that's, now, now the adults are taking That's it a really key thing right now, is everyone wants their food to be Instagrammable, which is, uh, you know, we, we bear it in mind, but we don't let that dictate what we do. But we, we also try and make it pleasing, aesthetically mm -hmm. pleasing. 
Annie's say hi Annie. Annie Castagne is watching. Hi Annie. Raced home to watch this, dear Karen. Started watching with friends in my car. Now I'm totally gripped. What fabulous ideas. Nobody should get married without you. Is she referring oh. to Matt and I or yourself? <laughs> <laughs> And you, you missed the first four segments. We've had live music, we've had smashings of the glass, we've had Bruce, we've had, we've had so much amazing stuff. So make sure you click on the hashtag Smashing Summit to catch up on all the ones where we've got loads more left this evening. Um, so what's your sort of, if someone wants to sort of take something from the segment, one or two big tips on what they should think about getting creative with their food and drink? Well, I think we think go to the caterers with some ideas. Um, yes. You know, we offer, I'd like to sit down with everybody that we meet, if that's for a bar mitzvah for a wedding, so talk to the bride and groom, talk to the parents, ask what inspires you, what kind of food you like to eat. So take photos, use Instagram, create a Pinterest board, tell us what you don't like, yes. and it makes our life much easier. Yeah, Otherwise, we could be reading off ideas all day long. So just come to us with a little bit of inspiration and we can work something up. We're happy to work bespoke menus for every client. Yeah. And, so we and try and we try and go into detail. But if you're pushing your caterer or your hotel to be creative, and I think hotels, caterers are all wishing to be creative, hold them to that, but don't push them too far that they can't then deliver. I think that's the important thing. Litmus test what they're doing, yes. understand how they're gonna do it, and do it at the right times. That's what I was saying earlier on. You know, there's times in during the proceedings of a Jewish wedding that you can be creative, but I think when it comes to main course, just make it great. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And I know that I think Matt and David together are going to be doing a special... Um, Dance? <laughs> no. Yes, we I are. I spoke to Johnny. I don't know if he told you this. You're, we're going to be doing a live wedding food Q&A from the Food Story Kitchen inside the VIP Club. Where you can literally yeah. ask your stuff and you're going to be cooking live. It's going to be amazing. So, March, I think. Yes. Yeah. March 21st, Matt, one of the lives inside the club. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't share it myself. You, you can do did. the cooking. Yeah. Um, so, so, question from Amanda. Matt and David, what are the upcoming food trends for 2018 for mitzvahs, especially from the Rosewood London girls? You've got some girl crushes going on in Rosewood London. Oops, that's definitely <laughs> David. <then. laughs> um, yeah, for bar mitzvahs, you know, it's tough to be honest with you. Um, well, the children, mitzvahs, the children mitzvahs. foods. Okay, so this is any mitzvahs. Yeah, okay, great. 2018. So for us, I mean, our food, we've kind of uh, evolved our menus over the last few years. We're still seeing a huge trend for the kind of raw fish starters. Mm -hmm. So we're doing lots of things like ceviche. So we have a salmon ceviche with pineapple, chili, lemongrass, and chili at the moment. Yeah. Lots yeah. of poke. So that's a raw fish. It's like a sushi bowl with soy sauce, okay. edamame, yeah. guacamole. So really huge, kind of powerful flavors. Um, and those those starters have been really popular. This is so this is the poke. Um, That's the tuna one. Yeah, this is the tuna poke. So it's got a mixture of sushi rice, wild rice, Stunning. comes with guacamole, just, edamame, is. some togarashi pepper on top. So full of flavour, um, really kind of crowd pleasing, and just just something a bit more modern. So yes, this you, then you allows get the kind of what mm. couples want. I really Absolutely, think, and, and I you know, that. great great starter. As Matt was just mentioned earlier about having a cold starter, much more accessible for the caterer just meaning that you're not going to be let down by a cold starter or cold food. Really easy for the for the caterers to kind of get out. And, and I think everyone's going to start getting their own plates back as well. The, the, the idea of sharing is going. Oh, yes. So I think everyone's going to get their own plate of food as well, which I think is um, going to please an awful lot of guests. So we're going to have to wrap up right now. I know these are all really short teasers, all these seconds. We've got so much to fill it. To We've got so much to pack in, even though we're doing this for five hours. Our next guest is none other than the chief designer of Galia Lahav, the hottest, one of the hottest Israeli wedding dress designers in the world. Live from Israel, we're going to be going split screen for that one. So fingers crossed it's all going to work. So we need to get our, get ourselves ready. Last question from America. What made you guys go specifically into the kosher catering market? The USA needs you. We're coming. <laughs> yeah, we're coming. We're coming. You. We're just... Uh, Drop us an email. Yeah, we'll be there in about... <laughs> well, <that's> 12 hours. <laughs> These guys are amazing. And um, Food Story. Yeah, follow us on with... social media on Instagram at Food Story London. Yeah. And yeah. Same on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter as well. Yeah, yeah. keep up. And uh, watch out for our new product. I think it's going to smash the London market. No pun intended. No, no. pun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And yeah. Thank we'll you. be back shortly at 7.30 UK time, 2.30 USA time for the Chief Designer of Galilee Love talking about Fashion Forward. Um, what is it, Claire, the next segment? Uh, here, I've got it. Hang on. Uh, fashion Forward Bride. Style ideas for the Fashion Forward Bride because we want to look hot and sexy, but we also want to be all covered up under the hooker. What do you do? Sharon is going to help us with that. So see you back here Great. soon. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye. Okay, everyone, we are back. We are live again with 
my pro we've had some amazing segments already, but this is going to be my favorite yet. I can feel it because it's all about bridal fashion, bridal trends, and we have the most incredible special guest for you. We have Sharon Sever, who's the chief designer of Galia Le Havre, the hottest Israeli fashion designer out there. Um, this is an absolute exclusive. I'm so excited. I'm going to bring him on shortly. Um, I just want to tell you all to share, uh, not share, to comment and ask us any questions. Sharon is here to help. I'm here to help. Any questions you have about your wedding dress trends, we are here to help you. Um, I first met Sharon in London a couple of months ago through Brown's Bride, who are the exclusive stockists of Galia Le Havre. Um, and we, are, we, we, we bonded straight away and we got on straight away and I, I had to have him tonight for the summit and I'm so thrilled that he's here to help us talk all about fashionable trends, how do trends apply if you're, if you're a more conservative bride, you still have to incorporate trends, um, what about under the chuppah if you want to be fashion forward and cover your shoulders, all those kind of things. Hi, hi Anastasia, great to have you on. Um, we've obviously featured so many weddings on Smash in the Glass with Galil Hub Brides, and they always get the most love. So this is a true honor and so exciting to have um, Sean with us. Obviously, on Monday, we had Seppi and Amid's wedding with a Galil Hub the Hub Bride, I think got the most likes on Instagram ever. So this is really something. So Sharon is in Tel Aviv. I'm going to bring him on by the magic of um, digital technology. So you're, I think you're on a split screen with me now, uh, Sharon. Can, I, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, hi right. everybody. So welcome, Sharon. Welcome on to um, Smashing the Glasses Facebook page. Um, it's Thank a real you. honor and thrill to have you with us. Um, we are so delighted to talk to you direct and hear about what goes on behind the scenes at uh, Galia Le Havre and what tips you have for our, our brides who are planning their weddings and, and are wanting to be fashion forward. Um, so, so, so tell us, what, what are the big trends at the moment and, and, and you know, what's, what's hot right now? Well, we just got back from Paris last week where we presented our couture. Yes. Which is uh, the third time we've been invited to Paris. How exciting. And uh, that's, uh, if you're talking trends, that's the peak of uh, fashion. So apparently, lately, everything is very glam, very glitzy, very sexy, uh, very bright colors. And it does reflect on bridal wear, but obviously not as much. Yes. Although we try to uh, be more um, fashionable, I always say we make fashion for brides and not wedding gowns. I love that. I love that. But it really feels like, you know, you see the, the, the trends on the runway and then straight away it's coming up in bridal fashion, which is a new thing. It wasn't like that, you know, five, ten years ago. And I think you get it. <laughs> I should hope so. Uh, five years ago, six years ago, when we first started exporting, we had no idea how the world is going to react to uh, the uh, Israeli take on uh, bridal wear because, uh, you know, our weddings are very long and uh, we have a different uh, kind of uh, celebration. The ceremony is a different part. The party is a different part. The dinner is a different part. The after party is also another one. And uh, it takes a different way to carry yourself throughout the whole evening. And then when we arrived to the United States the first time with a couple of suitcases with dresses, mm -hmm. some of the clients were pretty uh, overwhelmed and they didn't know how to take it in. But uh, after one season, the response was just overwhelming and uh, it took off in uh, less than um, a few months. And you feel like your designs are risks, like brides want to take more risks, or are you pushing boundaries, or are you just, what, what are you seeing that, in terms of brides these days? Because I feel like, I got married in 2013, and I wish there was, the, it was only four years ago, and I wish there was a variety of designs out now that, you know, it's changed so much even in four years. Uh, the world is changing because with social media and the way everything's open today and uh, trendsetters are sometimes 15 and 16 year old <laughs> and everything moves so fast that it doesn't, um, you know, the old establishment, the old traditional ways are gone. And, that and was it's very good in a way because it opens up 
the world to a lot of new things and everything's moving and girls want to be trendy and uh, it's not about risk taking anymore. It's about uh, wanting to be you or something else that is uh, not, not that it's not you, but the thing especially about brides is uh, are you going to be yourself are you going to be as beautiful as you can be on that day or do you want to look like your grandmother or listen to her <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I love about Israeli straight up there straight talk and I think you know people feel like it's refreshing to see you know you designing what the brides actually want um, it was great when I saw your brown's bride and I saw you working with a bride directly and how you you can, you know, make the dress that she wants, but it's still your artistic creation. And I love seeing seeing the, the sort of your attention to detail and service, but that 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 bride in that incredible dress. Um, well, you know, it's very reward, rewarding to see a, a real bride wearing a dress because uh, women do take a lot of attention they pay a lot of attention to everything today everybody goes to the gym everybody takes care of their skin their teeth their uh, eyebrows it's everything's so different now and uh when you invest so much in you in yourself i think you want to look as good as you can be on that day and then when you see a real bride looking even more glamorous than the models that wore the the samples in the same dress it just, you know, that's what I live for. And what about brides who want to look more conservative and under the chuppah? Can you be conservative and fashion forward at the same time? Well, it's a bit difficult to be conservative because the world is not conservative today. Now, I always say that you can wear a dress close up to here and still be sexy because what makes a dress sexy is the woman that wears it. Yes, yes. It's not the dress. I love that. I love that. So it's all about the way you carry yourself. It's all about what you want to look like. It's uh, not about the sleeves or the neckline. You can always throw a huge shawl over your shoulders with a feather or something. There are a lot of solutions today to covering up for the pupa, especially all these capes that are very fashionable now or uh, sort of uh, sleeves. robes that you can wear and then remove or detachable sleeves. But it's about being really um, styling yourself the way you are. Yes, absolutely. And then it, it doesn't matter if the neckline's raised or if you add sleeves. And I know that a kind of big thing right now is two-in-one looks anyway. So you can have a kind of covered up type addition to your, your look and under the chuppah and then the big reveal for the party. Should we talk about the new collection, Florence by Night? Because I want to see... I want to show the guys some of your some of your designs. Duke Duke from Duke Photography is on. Hi Duke, he's saying God I love Sharon. He do you, <laughs> we actually featured one of Duke's weddings with a Gabriela Half Bride on Monday. Did you see it, Sharon? Seppi and it was an LA wedding with a, a very very yeah yeah wedding. I did. Wow, so amazing. That, Duke Duke was the photographer there. So yeah, they're saying can we see the pictures? Work. So. Shall we start off with, shall I just flick through some images and you want to talk up a little bit about the dresses or the new collection? Would that be a good idea? Yeah, let's just start with the collection maybe. The, you know, there's always, uh, designers are always looking for a theme and there's always something that needs to draw your uh, imaginary world. But uh, last time we were in Paris, uh, we were we had a meeting with uh, an embroiderer and we were walking down the street and then uh, I was with Galia and I stopped by the window of a local perfume maker and the window was full of all these test tubes with all the tiny flowers. Yes. And I saw a few flowers that reminded me of my grandmother and then I said, funny how... Um, uh, a certain scent can trigger a memory. That's what Absolutely. a wedding gown should be like. You should always look at your wedding pictures and say, wow, that was You're right. it's the something same. unforgettable, <laughs> timeless, whatever. And I told Galia, that's it. That's the new collection. Yeah, it's, you're absolutely right. That moment when you smell something and it takes you right back, you're absolutely right. That's 
such a lovely idea to translate that to a wedding collection. It's all about a moment. There's a moment when you purchase the dress, there's a moment when you wear it, and there's the moment every time you look back at it. Can you see the images that I'm showing? I don't suppose you've got your... Uh, uh, no. Okay. So but just tell me the name of the dress. We're looking at Daffodil right now, and someone said, Lo Leanne said she loves that one. So we're looking at Daffodil. We've seen Coco, Xenia, Amaya, we're now in Daffodil. <laughs> Okay, all names of flowers, is like certainly okay. a fashion-forward dress. It's a new kind of uh, ball gown. Yeah. It's uh, very voluminous, but it's very lightweight. If you will hold the dress in your hand, you will see that it weighs nothing. It just gets its volume from all the construction of it. Plus, it's a new kind of fabric that is very uh, vaporous. Yes, it looks unbelievably light and... Um, fairy tale like but modern fairy tale and then we've got now Emrys Emrys is uh, definitely florist by night it's all uh, Swarovski crystals and they're all hand sewn one by one wow uh, individually sewn we need according them. to everyone's uh, body and it took a lot of um, uh, how should I say, engineering to build this dress because uh, the scattering of the crystals had to be very uh, precise, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. It's outstanding. And that's actually co completely covered up to the neckline, but also very bare. It's, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Yes, And it now is. we're on to Juniper, which is sensational. I love this. I can Juniper see we've got the, the back and the front. Uh, column corseted fitted dress, which is a, a very signature look of Gallia, but it's a modern take on it. The neckline is different. It has this uh, cape that, uh, by the way, is a good solution for the ceremony. It has uh, a lot of flair, but it's sheer, so there is no uh, there is no weight to the dresses. One thing that was very important to us this collection was that the dresses should be very lightweight. We're getting so many hearts and likes for these dresses, Sean. I cannot tell you they're flying <laughs> over the screen. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, and um, we've got we're now moving on to Magnolia, but Juniper got so much love in particular. Now we're on to Magnolia. We can see front and back. Okay, Magnolia also has a top that is re uh, removable. The sleeves are detachable, the cape is detachable, the cape can turn into a veil, and the whole uh, top can be uh, transformed into a sweetheart. I can see, my goodness. Um, very dramatic, but very kind of... Stunning. Very. Yeah. But we are dramatic. Mm. We're not for the bashful bride. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're moving on to Butter Kiss. Okay, Butter Kiss. Butter Kiss is another uh, love story. I fell in love with the fabric at the exhibition in Paris, but the color was wrong. And um, we wanted something metallic, but we didn't know if we were going to keep the original color because it was kind of pinkish, and uh, Galia wanted to keep the metallic effect of the fabric and then we made the silver which it was uh, eventually made from but it was too dense so we had to make it sheer and eventually it reached the final result which was kind of a, a very dreamy kind of you don't know if it's an organza or a brocade or a jacquard and, yes uh, yeah it's, it's like a new very invention. Flowy, and it has uh, that hint of uh, lurex that is very fashionable now. Stunning. And we're going to move on to another dress in a minute. I just want to tell everyone if you've got any questions for Sean, put them in the comments now. We're getting loads of gorgeous and love and this. This is your one chance to ask Sharon, the chief designer <laughs> of Ghana Lahab, a question. Um, so pop them in the comments because in five minutes we'll be, we'll be wrapping up. But yeah, the hearts are flying left, right and center. There's a lot of love for the designs. So if we go back to, let's, we're now on to Mila, which is just Mila. breathtaking. Wow. 
Mila is also, uh, it seems innocent, but all the tiny flowers you see are uh, handmade. It's, uh, they're actually embroidery. I can they're all oh, tiny, tiny beads sewn into a flower. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. And rose water to finish with. Rose water. Rose water is another love story. <laughs> it's another uh, embroidery that is uh, scattered, cascading all through uh, the, the entire dress. Everything is sewn by hand. Every wow. tiny bead is sewn. And it's uh, when I saw the sample, it was a masterpiece. I fell in love with it right away. <laughs> It really is. You almost can't tell what's the body and what's what's the dress. It kind of all all becomes one. Um, but it's fun when you work with embroidery. You see all the samples, and uh, every tiny sample you see is a story. And when you start to develop it into a garment, it's always a, a challenge to reflect what you saw in that little square that will be... Um, transformed into somebody's uh, dream come true. Leanne from America, she, um, she's my sister-in-law, lives in America, she says, I know she's been married almost 10 years, I think it is 10 years, she says, these make me wish I was getting married again, and she got married in Vera Wang, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame you weren't around so much 10 years ago in, in, in the um, USA scene, but speaking of which, I know you're the exclusive stockist of Brown's Bride in the UK, right? Yes, if we are. If anyone's in the UK, you've got to get down to Brown's Bride. And Sean flies in every now and then for the trunk shows as well. So Brown's Bride is where you can buy Galia Lahav in the UK. Can you tell everyone where, where they can buy in the USA? We've got a lot of American um, readers as well. Uh, we have uh, dozens of stockists in the States, Australia, Asia. But uh, I think uh, Brown's Bride is uh, maybe one of the top addresses which uh, a bride can turn to. The, this place has a history, it has a, uh, the fashion, it has the knowledge, it has everything that is actually Galia Lahav. Don't forget, when you buy a wedding gown, it's not uh, a, a t-shirt, I won't say a t-shirt, but just a dress for a night out. This uh, garment needs a follow-up. You have to come to fittings. You have to make sure it's hemmed properly. You have to make sure it fits you properly. And you need the right attention. And uh, that is why we choose all our retailers very, very carefully. And we're very closely connected with Brown's Bride. They're, they're recommended vendors, and they're a big part of our VIB club, which we're launching. Brown's Bride are doing a really special gift for VIBs. We absolutely love Brown's Bride. We've got a couple of minutes before we go. We'll get to a couple of questions. Um, yes. Annie's saying, how important is it to get your personality into your wedding without offending our parents and traditions? I think uh, if you are yourself, it doesn't necessarily have to be provocative to be yourself. There should be a fine line between uh, your parents' wishes and yours. But uh, if you are you in that dress, I don't think anyone will oppose that. That's right. Perfect answer. And what we've got, we've got around time for just one more question. But I know, Sean, we're probably going to do something together later on in the year, right? Maybe with some models and we'll look at the dresses and... I want to do more. This is just a taster. <laughs> um, okay. Kelsey's saying um, she absolutely loves the dresses. She's saying, do you always need shapewear? My gown has a low illusion back, and I don't see how any of the typical shapewear won't come above the dress line in the back and show a bit. Well, there's a secret in our dresses. They are made to sculpt the body without a corset. Wow. So no shapewear They're, needed. No. It does that without any additional support. And quickly before we go, I just want to tell everyone that Galil Hub are now doing a couture evening wear collection again, so there's no excuse for the guests not to be dressed beautifully and the mother of the bride not to be beautifully. Is that right? Yes, and you can find everything online. Oh, well, well maybe we'll <laughs> do a segment about mother of the bride and evening wear and guests because it's a big one too for our readers. So maybe we'll do Yeah, that. take a look at the last collection. It's very... 
glamorous. We will, we will. I'm sorry we have to cut off short. I could talk to you for so long, and but we'll do more. We'll do more. This is just a taster. Um, With pleasure. It's been such a huge, huge pleasure. And again, Galila Hub with Brown's Bride, a part of our VIB club, which is our brand new club for very important brides, where we're going to have so much fun um, with brides. You can click on the link for more details. Um, but, Sean, it's been the biggest of pleasures, and I hope to see you really soon in person. Pleasure's been mine. Thank you. All the best. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Hi everybody, we are live, we are in our Smashing Summit, we are I think just over halfway through and we've had so much fabulousness already. We've just had Daron Sever, the Chief Designer of Ali La Havre, we've had amazing music, we've had Smashing of the Glass, we've had creative uh, food and drink ideas and now we are onto something in incredibly special and I'm incredibly honoured to have one of the biggest wedding industry icons in the world, live, here to answer your questions and tell you about the top five wedding cake trends for 2000 and 2000, 2018 and 19. I'm going to be bringing him on in a minute. I'm talking about the Ron Ben Israel, executive chef and owner of world-renowned renowned Ron Ben Israel Cakes. He's not on yet. I'm just going to tell one or two little things about him and then I'm going to bring him right on. So, um, Ron is absolutely, in my opinion, the finest wedding cake and special occasion cake designer in the world. Um, you've probably seen him on TV. He's basically uh, created cakes for anyone and everyone. Um, but without further ado, let's bring him on. Let me, let me just click him in, uh, here. There you are. You are live, Ron. Live to the world. <laughs> Welcome. Um, let's talk about the top five wedding cake trends for 2018 and 2019. What, what can you tell us? Well, anything you want, dear bride and dear groom. <laughs> uh, of course, we aim to create a bespoke creation for each couple. So everything is possible. But if I were to look at what people are ordering and responding to, I would uh, name a trend called Return to Big. For a while, because of uh, financial recession, we made smaller and smaller cakes. But as you can see behind me, we started stretching the cakes up and higher and higher. And even if the wedding is not that large, couples are asking us to extend the cake. It's very Manhattan-like, very skyscraper. So, Karen, do you have some photos to show, I believe? Absolutely. So, let's get them on. Um, I'm not sure if you can see what we can see, but we have a very very I don't know if Hannah can see what you can see we have the number one of the return to big we've got three images to show um, this is a cake with flowers cascading round, and it's a white cake right and I think this one has six tiers and the tiers are elongated as well so you don't have to have shallow we fill the cakes in many layers of cakes and fillings and uh, textures so you can build a slice that will be towering itself we actually recommend to use salad plates as opposed to dessert plates. And we next up we have this um, kind of gold squares at the bottom and then a circular tier and flowers in between each tier. Right, so this cake is interesting because it shows us another trend which is the use of mixed metallics. And you can see shiny yellowish gold, rose gold, uh, silver, and also a little bit of copper. So mixing metallics on a wedding cake is very celebratory, and you see lots of sugar flowers. We don't advocate using um, real flowers on a cake because of the pesticides, which many times coat them. And of course, our artistry is using sugar flowers. And, of, and you can see the height. The flowers create almost clouds that seemingly float the tears one on top of the other. It's breathtaking, Ron. Absolutely breathtaking. You're an app creative genius. Next up, we have um, different shaped tiers with um, sort of gold ornate around the bottom and some right. feathers. So this particular cake was created for a couple that wanted to commemorate the Native American tradition. Therefore, on the very top, you see sugar feathers. You see very bold and saturated colors. 
and the use of turquoise stone, semi-precious stone, uh, monograms, which are very big, monograms or initials on the cake, and the use of, um, on the very bottom, you see some, again, the feathers. Absolutely stunning um, creations. And these are generally your ideas, or people come to you and say, I want big, and you just go ahead? It's a combination. <laughs> I have a huge folder of things that I would like to do, and I'm waiting for the right person to attach them to you. And then the first thing I do is listen to the couple's ideas. I ask them to prepare in advance and look at our portfolios and, of course, look online. So we look at what they bring, but most important is who they are. So when I meet with a couple, I ask about the family traditions. I look at the invitations to see if there's any particular calligraphy. Uh, the bride's dress. Um, a lot of grooms these days wear navy, so we may incorporate the navy or the grain the cake. So it's a combination of everything. I don't have a ready-made collection, but I have a lot of suggestions. Jeanette is saying, mixed metals are part of the theme for my wedding. Stripes of metallic like the previous cake is perfect. <laughs> Great. I can't see the questions, but I would be happy to answer anything or listen to any comment people may have. This is your one chance to ask Rob and Israel your questions, so get them in, get them in. So now we're going to move on to metallics, which is another big trend. And we've got the cake, which is my favorite, with the tears, upside the tears and the baubles, which is the most stunning thing I've ever seen. Oh, are you talking about the cake that is squares? Oh, oh yeah, I know, with the bubbles. Yes, I'm obsessed. The idea for the cake was champagne bubbles. So, of course, uh, mixed metals and um, no sugar flowers, no calligraphy, just the use of piped and shaped icing bubbles. And what gives you the idea to do these tears? You know, I, this is something I've never seen and it's so fabulous. It was trial and error and playing with things. You know, that comes from talking to clients who want something different but don't know exactly what they want. So I think in exasperation I said, would you like it tilted and so forth? And that's what came up. And an interesting concept is, even though the tears are tilted, they're actually very structured themselves. So each slice of the cake will be identical. And to top it all, the cakes balance each other. So it's my allegory of wedding life. There are ups and downs and tilting, <laughs> shifting, but ultimately the cake balances itself like married life, hopefully. So the cakes doesn't tumble. It's very stable. We're getting it's still so enduring. We're getting quite a few questions. Do you want me to ask some as we go along or wait till the end? What would you rather? No, please do ask. Okay, so Tracy George is saying, I loved Sweet Genius. Any chance that it will return? Oh, I would love that, but it's not up to me. It's up to the Food Network. And if you care to write them and mention <laughs> that, that would be great. Let's do it. Um, Claudine is asking, how do you transport the cakes? Do you create on site? No, 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 no. Um, all our cakes are completed at least 24 hours in advance and they are refrigerated because that's something for every couple I suggest to visit the bakery and ask for a tour of the facility. You want to make sure it's cleaned and it's licensed. So we display our license on the front door as required by the Department of Health. Since all our cakes are made out of cream and sugar and butter and eggs, we refrigerate them overnight until the butter hardens. Then the cakes go into crates and deliver to the location. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so up to five or six years, the cakes will be delivered completed as one big piece in cardboard or wood crates. But cakes that are very tall, six or seven feet, will be delivered by our crew in few pieces and then constructed on site. But we very rarely decorate on site because we will have few cakes in different states even. And the last thing I want to do is decorate while the guests are arriving. Oh, gosh, yes. And Ashley's saying, are the balls edible? And I think everything you do is edible. It's just unreal that it, it, it really is. I'm sorry, the question was, are the boards edible? Balls in the metallic case. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> All the decorative elements on the cake are edible. There are hidden boards and supports, but they would always be hidden and always non-toxic. So the inner dowels will be hidden from um, touch. And if you look closely 
every cake will come on its own board that is covered with matching frosting and trimmed with a ribbon, and therefore there will be a total seamless experience of confectionery work. We'll do one more question, then we'll move on to the trends. Um, how difficult is it to make gluten-free wedding cakes? Not difficult at all. You just have to be insistent, consistent, and stubborn. Everything else we do relies on the fact that I don't give up easily. <laughs> so when the gluten-free need came along, we just researched a lot. Luckily now there are a lot of recipes. If you are a baker, do me a favor, don't rely on recipes online, unless they're mine, yeah. <laughs> on Food Network. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Um, I suggest investing in good uh, books that are come from a re reputable source. And then there are many different mixtures of gluten-free flours. The only thing to remember, those are usually organic and they, are, they don't last for a long time. We keep some of it in the freezer, but you have to buy new flours consistently. So do keep the questions coming, it's wonderful, but we're just gonna to return to some images now. So let's go on, the second metallics one is an incredible construction almost with the squares, with layer, with, with Yes. Layers. Yeah. So this cake we created for the opening of the Four Seasons Hotel, downtown New York, and the architects who created their inner spaces um, came up with a concept that I name con constrained. So let's say the marble is not covering surfaces without stock, it's inside um, panels. And that's what we wanted to create in the cake. Uh, there's a few other elements, the squares, the fact that the tiers are in different heights, so that the second to the top tier is double height. Uh, we felt that any florals more than the very elegant and restrained cherry blossom would be too much. And of course you have the use of gold. So there isn't just one trend on a cake, usually it will be a combination of few. And are the fillings, do the fillings of the cake have trends as well? Like what are people wanting inside the cake? To, Absolutely. You know, when I started, uh, people were familiar with lemon and raspberry fillings. But I started doing pastry in France and I was familiar with passion fruit. And it took a few years to convince the New York um, crowd that passion fruit is a legitimate flavor, that people were not aware of it. And then I started mixing caramels and praline and pistachio. This was, people had maybe um, walnuts or hazelnuts, but not pistachio. And then I started doing things with peanuts, and people thought that peanut butter is just for kids. But we do very adult, sophisticated wedding cakes with peanut butter and jelly That's for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, there are trends in flavors. The trends that I don't appreciate as much is going back to the fake nostalgia of margarine and powdered sugar. Yeah. I like our cakes to be based on the European tradition of real good eggs, butter, and fruit, nuts, chocolate, and not anything that is fake. Uh, for instance, we have a favorite flavor that we call Nutella, but it's not using the commercial Nutella, which I hope to say it's legitimate. Uh, our products will not have vegetable shortening. So when we do our version, which is Gianduia, the original Italian version, it's pure dark chocolate and hazelnut paste. Well, I sure hope that's a trend because it's not that. I'm aware of time, so I want to move on to the next trend, which is, we've done metallics, we're going to look at painted watercolors, and we've got the cake which is kind of pink and gold, it says happy birthday right. on it. Right, right, right. So, we, our inspiration to do watercolor came from stationery, working a lot with CC New York, and uh, it was her idea and suggestion. And we started experimenting. And of course, in art school, I did a lot of watercolor, but on paper. And icing responds totally different. And food color also responds differently. So it took quite a lot of experimentation. And when we send out a cake, not only it has to be completed in advance by my crew and then refrigerated, then it has to travel, sometimes hours each way, uh, then displayed in the reception site for at least six to eight hours. So just wanting to do watercolor and actually being able to stand behind it took, took a lot of experimentation. But anything is possible now. 
Let's look at an incredible, um, this palm tree one. I think you, you've got one behind right. you. Right. Incredible. So it looks a little bit like watercolor and uh, also uh, wallpaper, which uh, now there are companies that create wallpapers that a design covers the whole wall. It's not repeated. So that was the inspiration, of course, a tropical theme. Um, you know, I'm not into taking uh, the old masters, let's say Van Gogh, and putting it on a cake. <laughs> but as long as it's abstract or has a relationship to something such as the papery, the invitation suite, then I'm very interested in it. I mean, this is so fresh and, and modern and crisp, and I think you just understand what we want. You know, I've never seen anything like it, and I love seeing how personalized the cake can get and you're just pushing the boundaries. Um, let me just tell you that Shiri says, thank you for asking my question from this celiac Israeli American bride trying to get a wedding cake. Appreciate your help, Bahava. <laughs> ah, that's nice. Um, Syrah, who is saying so pretty, we're getting so much love for your cakes, Ron, I cannot tell you, there's hearts flying all over the screen. Um, <laughs> um, Lisa Lamar, who's an amazing wedding planner, this is very elegant and fun about the palm, the palm leaves. And we've got one more painted watercolor image, which is a real close-up of a cake. It looks almost like texture, a white texture right. with purple, yeah? Right. So this was actually a baby shower cake, I believe. Yes. And what we did is first the watercolor on the background, inspired by the invitation, and then we took a little lace dress that the baby wore and replicated it on the surface. So as I always said, there are a few trends in each cake and a few different techniques. Since it's a close-up, hopefully you can observe the mm. details, the texture of it. The icing looks as if it was hand embroidered. And these are, it's made with silicone molds that I do in-house. And the nice thing about using your own silicone mold, if you are a cake designer, nobody else has them. <laughs> so of course you can buy tools commercially, but it's much nicer to learn techniques such as painting and sculpting and molding, so you can do your own. And if you are looking, if you are in the market for wedding cake, uh, see what kind of techniques your baker offers. Are they going to buy things at the store and repeat what they've seen? Or are they going to be in the forefront and create a trend that will be yours only? I love that. And Lucy's asking, <laughs> you're New York, New York based. Do you only work for New York weddings or do you do further afield? I'll, I'll answer that in a moment. Can I have the copy of the Martha Stewart wedding issue, please? Uh, it's on the road. So I wanted to, to talk a little bit about something else, but before that about transportation, we will deliver a cake anywhere necessary, but um, of course it's a matter of cost and complication. So most of our guests go to the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, and then further there we go to, we drive to Maryland, to um, Washington DC, uh, upstate New York, even getting close to Canada. But beyond that, you have two options. Either drive uh, in multiple days in refrigerated trucks or fly. And both options are available, but they're not simple. You cannot hand a cake to a, a, a common courier like UPS or FedEx. You really need to have the right transportation and the manpower. And of course, it expresses itself in cost. But if somebody wants to, I would be very happy to discuss it with them. Karen, with your permission, I wanted to show the current issue of Martha Stewart Weddings. Um, so Martha Stewart Wedding comes out four times a year, and I've been very lucky since the beginning of my career to collaborate with them and with Martha. She basically discovered me. And this issue is very special and close to my heart because we created winter cakes that are inspired by fabrics including a cake that uh, has um, knitting texture. So the nice thing of working with the artistic um, and creative staff of a magazine is that we can explore new ideas. These are prototypes. And based on that, we can do more and more cake. So this is the knitted cake. If you just put it a little bit higher, Ron. Oh, wow. Look at that. So it's, it's like rope, a feel of rope. So this magazine is available on the newsstand for, I believe, two more months. Uh, we have a damask cake, 
And on this side, a ruffled oh, cake. Wow, how sensational. We've got... Now, sorry, I was about to tell you that we started a new blog. Yes. And our blog is called asthecaketurns.com. Got it. Okay, well, pop, pop that in the comments. Get Hannah to pop it in the comments so everyone can visit. <laughs> so on, the, on our blog, on a weekly basis, we explore trends. We explore the relations between cakes and fashion. Sensational, sensational. I wanted to have smashthecake.com, but you took smash the castle. <laughs> We've got quite a few people commenting that they've got that magazine already last Sunday. So you see that these are paillettes, also inspired by fabrics. We are very lucky because we moved two years ago to the garment district of New York City, and all around us are shoe stores and fabric stores. So, um, Ah, just, you know, Mood Fabrics, which is a very famous store. Project Runway. Yes, of course, of course. So we are filled with inspiration and we never run out of ideas for kicks. Well, let's move on, let's move on, because we're, we're running out of time. And you know you've already been live for 20 minutes. So <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. So let's go back to our next trend. We've got two more to get through, which is stunning. Gray fondant, and we've got a kind of tier of shades of gray from dark all the way up to white. So the, I am in love with gray. My whole apartment is painted gray, and I just feel it's such a great neutral color because it has warmness. In grays, you can see reds and oranges and pinks, and you can also see the green and the blues, depending on which way you go. So the ambre, which is eternal, um, trend or fashion style. You can do dark to light, light to dark. And grays just enhance any color. And the actual wedding dress that are called pearl that are light gray. So why not explore this color that is not feminine, not masculine, it's in the middle. Because of course we have white crisp cakes and we have black cakes. The gray can fit in any situation. Um. Another beautiful grey cake with a kind of wood feel around the, around a couple of the tiers, um, and we have um, one with gray, uh, gold with grey. Uh, grey with gold seems to go very well, doesn't it? Right. So metallics gold. work well with grey, and as I say, there's not just one way. Um, the cake that you refer to that looks like wooden bands was created for a male couple, a gay couple, and in it we were looking to get away from the I don't want to say traditional wedding cake, but when you have same-sex couples, we need to explore a different directions. Just like when you have a mixed racial couple with different family backgrounds, let's say Indian and Jewish, yes. or Syrian and Persian. So we try to learn what flavors they like and what will make them feel that the cake was made just for them. So here we have more of a uh, feeling of chevron, which is a very masculine suit fabric, and the wood. Let me just go back to that um because i flicked onto the it's it, it is it does have a masculine feel about it you're right very elegant but masculine without being obvious it's wonderful so we need to move on to monograms um or branded typography our final trend we've got the lma cake fern mm -hmm. right so we we discuss with the couple we try to look at their invitations but even if they do not have a ready-made monogram we'll create it to them for them. So this is more contemporary and blocky, or we'll go very scripted. Uh, in the cake that is with a red background, the burgundy, you see very ornate golden. Yeah, I got uh, that one. Yep. And more and more we're doing um, just the couple's initials, so two letters as opposed to the family name in between. And that's because a lot of brides decide to keep the maiden name. So to have four letters will be too much. And it just feels younger and, and more of our time. It really does. And I love the fact that the cake is such a great place to add your personality um, or incorporate elements of your wedding location or your dress or, you know, and it's wonderful to see such creativity with what, with what you're doing. And I wish I could just taste a bit too. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll talk yes. about the inside of the cake. Yeah, so we're going to we'll do a gummy taste. Can't believe it. it's twenty five past eight. I'm you were both so generous to go over time, um, and it just it's just such a huge huge pleasure to let me let me clear the screen so I can see it. There you go. Um, well, what's your kind of final parting advice for 
for brides and, and, and couples um, getting married and thinking about their cake? So one thing is, and it's always been the case, um, it's wonderful to get inspired by magazine books and of course what's available on the internet. Um, the question is whether your local person can execute those to your satisfaction. So, you know, when you plan a big party, like a wedding, budget has to come first and a spreadsheet with how much allocated is to the decor, how much for the food, how much for the cake and try to stick to it. Discuss um, openly with your baker how much you want to spend on the cake, what can be provided and see that they can deliver something true and authentic. So rather than try and copy something, maybe create something original that will feel and be the right thing for you and for the provider. So not every vendor can do something, let's say for Martha Stewart magazine, but let's see what they have to offer that they feel comfortable with. I love it. I'm so sorry we've got a I could go on for for so much longer with you. I hope we can maybe do another interview or chat later on in the year because it feels too Next short. Time. But you are fabulous. Um, we're going to say goodbye now. Um, and thank and, you, Aaron, for organizing this great summit. It's been very interesting. It's the hugest honor to have you on as a guest. And let, let's let's keep our collaborations going. I hope to come to New York and, and visit you in, this, in the in the cake. And, and you'll get cake. So we're going to close out the live, but I'll keep you on Skype just so we can have a quick goodbye. So bye, everyone. Um, we'll see you on for the next segment, which is all about Jewish wedding traditions, but how to make them your own. It's all about the personality. So we'll be back right here in five minutes for the next segment. It's me again. It's We are well, I think, over halfway through our Smashing Summit. And we've got another incredible guest coming up talking about a big hot topic for you guys, which is Jewish wedding traditions and how to make them your own. This segment is part of our Smashing Summit, which if you see that hashtag and click on the hashtag, you can see all the segments together because we've had so many incredible moments already. You have to go back and watch them if you're just tuning in. Um, we're doing this summit to celebrate the launch of our brand new club for brides, the VIB club, which we are all so excited about. I think there's a little link above for you to see all the details. But basically, if you love smashing the glass, you'll love this even more. It's like it's like your vir STG Lux, your virtual maid of honor. Um, the VIB Club kind of came about because it's a kind of like something between Smash in the Glass, the blog, and my one-to-one -one consultancy where I am booked out for months. And I wanted to be able to help more people on a larger scale, along with my whole network of wedding experts. And it's something that I wish I would have had access to and I was planning my wedding, that's for sure. Um, so it is the VIB Club. VIB stands for very important bride because you are a very important bride and what you're going to get for it is in this slide it should work so yeah with vib we're going to do weekly there's going to be a, a special facebook group just for vibs and we're going to have weekly online bridal master classes so every week there'll be a master guys can we be quiet <laughs> this is important <laughs> um no, shush. <laughs> Weekly online masterclasses on the burning topics that you need to know about to plan your wedding. Um, we know that you don't want to read realms and realms of blog posts. So we, guys, go into the other. <laughs> we don't read realms and realms of blog posts. So we want to give you live videos with me and wedding experts on everything you need to know about and your chance to ask questions. Everything from an ideal Jewish wedding day timeline to um, what to expect at your first wedding dress fitting, all that kind of stuff. You're also going to get a 10% discount or a VIB exclusive gift from hundreds of vendors. They're all listed at the foot of um, the, the, the link at the top. Amazing vendors. You won't believe the names when you see them. Um, direct access to me, my team and my network. I'm going to be constantly on hand to help you plan your wedding your way. Fortnightly Ask the Rabbi sessions where if this is Ask the Rabbi, this is an inclusive rabbi. There's no judgment. And it's all done within the group. So you get this amazing crew of brides also alongside you to help you plan your wedding. And so much more. I'm going to um, take that slide off because, hang on, there we go. Because I want to actually show you my favorite, one of my favorite things, which is you also get one of these amazing smashed it smash pouches, which we smashed a glass in earlier. Um, they are exclusively for VIBs. Only VIBs get them. You cannot buy them for love nor money. And you just get so much more. So have a look at that link. Um, 
We've got a very limited uh, offer that's only for the first 100 members, um, a, limit, a, a sort of launch price. So make sure you're getting quick. Um, and that's it. I want to bring on my next guest, who is obviously part of the VIB club himself. I think he's going to be a big part of it. And he's also offering a special VIB gift for all VIBs. Come on, Blake, come in. Yes. <laughs> Great to see you. How are you? I'm fab. You haven't been on a Facebook Live with me for far too long. What it's have you been, been doing? Shooting weddings? Uh, a few, a few. It's been a few months. It's been a few months. Hi, everybody. So I'm sure you all know Blake, the internationally renowned wedding photographer. He is just the hottest ticket in town to photograph your wedding, and rightly so. He's also the most featured wedding photographer on Smashing the Glass. We just love your work, your work, your weddings, your clients. You. It all kind of goes hand in hand. Thank you. And Blake has supported Smashing the Glass from day one when I emailed him and said, anyway, we'll do that for another time. But <laughs> we've got lots to get through because... I thought it'd be really fun to have a segment on Jewish wedding traditions and how to make them your own. And Blake's, I think, seen more Jewish weddings than most people, and I thought it would be nice to get your take on it. I'd love to give my take on it. I would love to. Where should we start? Well, what's your personal favourite Jewish, we uh, Jewish wedding tradition? Perhaps we can start with that one. So I think my favourite moment at a Jewish wedding is when a bride sees the groom for the first time, when the couple see each other for the first time in the day. And... That's usually followed by what's known as the bedecken, when the groom will veil the bride and check that the, uh, hello Paul, um, <laughs> and check that the, the bride is indeed the person he's going to marry, and then he himself will put the groom over, uh, will put the groom, will put the veil. <laughs> You've seen that too? <laughs> I've seen that, I've seen everything. You can make it your own by putting the groom over the bride, um, by putting the veil over the bride. That's a new Jewish wedding tradition. I know, right? It's 2018. Um, so that, that for sure is my favourite probably moment of the day. So um, much emotion. So much emotion. And for me, I'm often in a room with the, with the bride waiting for the groom to kind of come down the corridor or come into the room for them to see each other. And often what you can hear coming up this corridor is uh, the groom's friends dancing, singing, stomping on the floor. And the volume just gets a little bit louder and a little bit louder and a little bit louder. And the feeling in that room is absolutely, it's completely palpable. It's an amazing feeling. So um, that's my favorite moment, I suppose, of a, a Jewish wedding tradition. And tell us about the different types of bedeckin. I know there's a public bedeckin and mm -hmm. a more traditional uh, yeah, style. A more private one, I suppose. Um, so I think that's... that's um... the, by the way, all the images I'm showing are Blake's uh, images, just to illustrate some of our points. Hang on. Let's go into the bedeckin. Yeah, on the oh, bridge. I think we just put the... Uh... Hang on. Yes. So tell us about this and, and why it's a bit different to the norm, this bedeckin. So this bedeckin, as you can see, is done on, uh, on a bridge outside. Um, and it's uh, what we call a public bedeckin, I suppose, in that everybody was welcome to witness what was happening and to be nearby, which itself gives a, a level of a, a different energy um, compared to if you're in a room with just close family and friends. And um, I think it's just a very, very scenic place to do that. You know, often we're, a couple will look at somewhere that's close to a chuppah or they'll look at a certain room in the venue where they're at. But actually to do something outside is a, is a really wonderful thing. And um, this was gorgeous. You had, uh, you had the bride who was kind of facing one way as the groom walked over the bridge and she turned. And it was kind of uh, a first look as well as a bedeckin yeah, in a I, beautiful spot. I sometimes hear couples saying, oh, the room for the bedeckin at our venue is not very nice. And you, I think you can think outside the box for where you do the bedeckin. Totally. It doesn't have to be in some totally. small room right next door to the ceremony room. I think the only the only thing to think about is that many brides don't want to be seen by their guests necessarily mm. um, before the chuppah, before they walk down the aisle. And, and that's something. So in terms of those public ones, many are fine with that. And many want everybody to come and see them and witness that moment happening and hug them and say hi. And, you know, some brides, you know, everyone's different, right? So some brides want to be a bit quieter um, and a bit more with themselves and their close friends and family just before before the ceremony. So we've got loads of comments for Blake. He's always so, 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 so popular. And do ask him any questions. This is your chance to ask Blake a question live, not about his beard, but about um, something Ooh, wedding related, gone. ideally, because we've got a, we've got a short, um, short segment today. But Blake will be back for more another sure. time but I'm it sure. is but yeah you've got Gemma and Lee and Lindsay and Mosha and your meet and Paul they're all they're all um yeah they're all being very pretty kind, happy to see you very, very yes. kind. Mosha hello <laughs> happy birthday for tomorrow by the way <laughs> um so what about my favorite mm -hmm. the smashing of the glass what have you seen different with that should I pull up a picture or let's, let's have a look let's do it um, hi Rachel 
I love this picture. Tell us what happened here. So this is the wonderful Sam and Johnny's wedding. And they, uh, they both decided that they would smash a glass at the same time as each other, which is the first time that I've ever seen that happen. And I think there are elements of the chuppah um, that are being slightly, uh, slightly modified and slightly tweaked all the time to become very, very personal. Whether that is the circling at the beginning, where traditionally a bride will circle the groom seven times. Sometimes now we see the bride circle the groom three times and the groom circle the bride three times and then circling each other. Um, and I think the same can be done with the smashing of the glass. So on that one, they both smashed a glass at the same time, which was, uh, which was awesome and looked great in a picture. And have you seen changes in the way couples are adapting traditions since when you first photographed and now in 2018? Are the people becoming a bit more... I think so. I think it's, it's, you know, I think it's very, you know, very important to personalise your wedding in the way that it should be and it should reflect you and it should reflect how you are as a couple. And um, I'm not just saying this because you're standing right next to me, but I think since... <laughs> Since Smashing the Glass launched, that's been, you know, it's, it's one of your really key uh, messages that you put out, that actually people should do what they want and do what they're comfortable with within the parameters of wherever they're at, Jewish, Jewishly, yeah. uh, religiously. So I think we've seen lots of changes. Everything's personalized now, whether yeah. that be from ceremonies to traditions to clothing to whatever it might be. I think everyone's looking for ways to really make it their own and to, to be able to personalize every every single part of a wedding day. And I think that certainly in terms of traditions is, uh, is happening. Thanks yeah. to you. Oh, well, thank you, Blake. On that note, um, you sent through an image, which I'm intrigued by mm. in terms of personalizing. These, look. They look like slippers. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to erase it. You may see yourself. Slippers. Slippers, I called that image. <laughs> slippers. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> this. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I sent this through because I thought they were really cool and because they were personalized. I mean, obviously wearing shoes is not really a kind of a Jewish wedding tradition as much as <laughs> something that people do on a daily basis, right? So, um, but the, uh, this was a wedding in Morocco. Um, it was in Marrakesh and the groom had had these, uh, these awesome slippers made um, with the khamsa on and that color scheme also went through parts of the wedding. Um, and I just thought they were very, very, very cool. So I know that we probably talk about personalizing <laughs> other parts of a wedding. And I just thought I'd send this through because yeah. you know, we it, love a khamsa. And it's obviously very meaningful and personal to the groom. And, sure. and I love that, that, that you know, grooms can express themselves with fashion too, I right? I think they should. I think they should. Um, while we're at it, what, what about this one? I was intrigued that you sent through as well. So <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is the roof of a chuppah. And it was on the top part of a chuppah directly above the bride and groom. And this is actually from a wedding just a couple of months ago. And um, thank you, Lee. This is uh, from a wedding a couple of months ago. And um, it was personal because the groom's father had actually passed away. Um, and this was the talit that belonged to the groom's father. Mm -hmm. So um, he passed that down to his son. And it was a way that, you know, his father could be there watching over the couple at the very moment they got married. And it was a beautiful thing. And I think even um, but as photographers, we're always shooting details and we're looking at the chuppah before the bride and groom come in and we're always looking for these things. And, and there's often, we need to be eagle-eyed sometimes that actually mm. something's not there just, just stunned just because it's there, but it's there because there's a real meaning. Um, and this was, this was very, very symbolic, you know, to have that right over the top was amazing. I love that. And um, um, yeah, I know that we read a lot in the, in the Real Wedding features about parts of the chuppah belonging to family members mm -hmm. and making that chuppah very, very symbolic. Yeah. So shall we move on to, what have we got now? Hang on. Um, we've done slippers. Can we talk about the tish? Shall we talk about the tish? Yes. So here you can see the very, very extremely handsome Lee, <laughs> um, who is in the middle of his tish. And obviously you can see it's, uh, it's not a, uh, it's not, a, not an ugly venue where they have their wedding. <laughs> so everything was outdoors at this wedding. And I think that's the first thing in the same way that we were talking about uh, the first look or the bedeckan. Um, these elements of a day can kind of be wherever, wherever you want them to be, obviously within the realms of your, of your venue. The tish for me is an amazing part of the day as well. And often I'm with the bride and that's, that's awesome. So I, you know, I see a bit of the tish, but, mm. but not loads and loads. And the tish is a very kind of tribal atmosphere and it's where the rabbi will... Um, will stand with the groom or sit with the groom and go through the ketubah. And it's where the groom actually signs the ketubah before the ceremony, before he goes and sees the bride. He's already, he knows his obligations as a Jewish husband and he's read through and he's signed. The other kind of side element of this is that uh, a lot of boys are there, a lot of men and the groom's friends and family. And it's up to them to almost whip him up into a fervor and get into this kind of very tribal, loud, spiritual, energized zone. You love that, don't you? I, I love it. Yeah, you I love it. it. I absolutely love it. I mean, even, you know, my own tish and 
around there when I remember being dancer to my own Bedeccan and, and it's this unbelievable feeling. It's it really is charged. Yeah. It's absolutely charged. Um, and we actually shot a Tish recently um, where there were lots of musical instruments there. And the uh, it was amazing. The groom himself was actually a, a Mazorti rabbi. Ollie, if you're watching, lovely to, uh, lovely to see watching. you. Um, the groom himself was a Mazorti rabbi. And um, lots of, <laughs> thank you, Daniela, um, and lots of, uh, lots of his friends were very musical and they have a very musical background. So there were, I think there was a guitar in there. There's nothing stopping you bringing a few drums in there. I think that's something that I'd like to see more. Oh, yes. And I can't see that, I can't see that there'd be any issue with that religiously and whichever denomination anyone's in. Um, I think anything to whip up atmosphere and make noise and make things just a bit crazier would be a great thing. So if any of our couples are watching for the next 12 months, bring some drums into your tish. <laughs> and, uh, you make and Blake I'll, very happy. I'll play a bit too. So Jeanette, lovely Jeanette, saying, what's your thoughts about signing the ketubah under the chuppah during mm -hmm. the ceremony instead of at a tish beforehand? Hi, Jeanette. Thanks for your question. Um, it's not something I've ever seen. That's the truth of it. So I've only ever seen um, the ketubah itself signed before and then the civil documents and the civil wedding documents signed kind of in and around the chuppah or just afterwards. So um, I think it would be lovely. I think it, it, I think it basically depends on, on the rabbi. It depends on the rabbi of that couple and, uh, and what they think should be done and what they would be done within those parameters. I think there's probably a symbolic reason why the groom has to accept all of those terms and conditions essentially before making his way to the chuppah. Um, I'm not sure what that reason is. Maybe somebody out there can, uh, can, can enlighten us. Um, and maybe Rabbi Andrew, if you're watching. Oh, Mount Rabbi Moshe. There we go. So, yes. it, so it is done in some communities in Israel. There we go. Thank there you. We go. Thank, thank you, you. Moshe. You were my hint when I said somebody. Moshe, <laughs> thank you. you hint. Um, Brett saying more music. Well, Johnny and uh, Jamie have left, unfortunately. They've gone on to do a gig. Blake, do you That's play true. instruments? I, I, I do. What do you play, drums? <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't play anything. I try and play lots of things at about a one out of ten level. Um, I'm very enthusiastic, but not very talented when it comes to music. So, um, Brett, we need some music from you. I've got to show one of the favorite images that you sent through was uh, um, this one. Tell me about this image. What a, what a shot. The circling. Um, so this is something that happens pretty much as soon as um, if the groom is under the chuppah and the bride is coming down the aisle towards the groom. As soon as she, as soon, <laughs> um, as, soon as she makes it to the chuppah, she would then circle the groom seven times that's in in orthodox traditions she would circle the groom seven times um, which is very symbolic and actually um it's there's a few things you can do with that the first one is that um when we got married we were told to to think about a different um a different aspiration for your life with every circle that you go around and actually for the bride and the groom to think about those things together so as she's circling the first time both the groom and the bride will be thinking about the family they'd like to build and as you circle the second time they'll be thinking about the, moral, the morals of uh, what they'd like to do with, with their marriage. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing because it's not circling for the sake of it. It's actually being on the same level, on the same wavelength and giving real meaning to every single circle that happens. That's um, beautiful. We touched um, on it before in terms of sometimes the groom circling the bride as well, but that's uh, personalize your wedding. It really is. Um, and we're going to have to wrap up any minute. I can't believe how the time's flying. Um, and Blake is going to dive much deeper on these topics and many others. And may even mm -hmm. sing inside the VIB club. You've got to be a VIB to hear Blake sing. Now they're going to sell there like cupcakes. There we go. <laughs> um, everybody wants you to sing. Um, but seriously, if you've got any burning questions for Blake that are not necessarily about singing, I don't think you're going to do that tonight. I don't think I'm going to sing tonight. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, you've got one minute everybody. to get them in. We're going to close um, up in one minute. Brett Warren said that he meant more music in the Tish, um, which was what we were talking about in terms of bringing more music in, yes. whether that's musicians yeah. or instruments. I think that's a great thing. Sometimes now we see a, a violinist or a saxophonist come into the Tish and join along with the melodies, which is really, really nice. Oh, no, but I think that would be awesome. Here we go. Ideal sign. Moshe, the ideal is signing the ketubah, the later the better. We don't really want a live contract before the deed is done. That's why some do it under the chuppah, but practically it's not so simple, so most just do it before at the tish. Thank you, Moshe. Okay, there we go. We're learning. We're learning, yeah. <laughs> Um, your dad's proud of you, Barry. Very nice too, very <laughs> I'm nice. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Well, that's all that matters. Right? <laughs> um, so yeah, Blake is one of our VIB vendors. He's going to be inside the club. He's got a special gift for VIBs. He is, he's my, he's my VIB. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Did you prepare that one? 
it's no, it's all, it's all just Blake. Good. So yeah, we have to close up, unfortunately, but um, we get lots more of Blake inside the VIB club, so do join. And thank you so much for all your fabulous comments and all your love for Blake. Everybody loves you, Blake. Quick, it's long quick. I know, yeah, it's I know. Very fast. We've already we'll been do doing this again. We've been doing a summit for three and a half hours, and um, still fresh as a daisy, Amazing. right? Very true. Very true. <laughs> Um, Rabbi Andrew quickly saying some couples here in the States have incorporated under the chuppah. I think that Jeanette was American. Yeah, okay. The state marriage license is not a lot. Anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there. Thank you, Blake. It's a pleasure. It's always such it's a, a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for, for tuning in. I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. I promise. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to close up. We are back in 10 minutes with another photographer. Do you know Duke? photography from LA. I do. So he is a superstar photographer, um, hot, hot, hot on the LA scene. We featured one of his weddings on Monday that you all went crazy for. He's coming on to, to teach us something that Blake, well, what do you think about this? How to find a perfect wedding photographer. It's we a did a topic. whole segment with Blake on that back in last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Which you all love. So let's hear what Duke has to say about it. So tune in and at nine o'clock UK time in 10 minutes for our next segment in the Smashing Summit. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Hi everybody. We are back for the next segment in our amazing Smashing Summit that I know you're all loving. We've already had hundreds of, if not thousands of people live watching, asking questions, getting so much from it. And we are so thrilled. Um, but the next segment, I know I say it, probably say it, but this is really something special. Um, Duke is somebody that I've been basically stalking on Instagram for years. <laughs> and to get him live, talking about what he knows best and what he's got such a gift for, which is wedding photography and composition and how to bring out the best in you, is such a treat. I could not be more thrilled. Um, we featured Duke's work on the Smashing the Glass on Monday with a real incredible real wedding that you all went nuts for, which I'll bring up um, a couple of images from. Um, and then yesterday was his interview, his five minutes with, which was so much fun. And it's it's beyond exciting to bring him on now. I'll bring him on in one second. Um, he's based in LA. He is the hottest wedding photographer in LA. Everybody wants him, but he's also so down to earth and approachable. So if you've got any questions, please plop them in the comments. Duke is here to help. I'm here to help. We're here to answer anything about anything that's on your mind. And um, give us some likes and some hearts if you like the images as well. Tell us where you're from, where are you watching from, and what kind of wedding you're having. Uh, tell us all that kind of stuff. So let me bring Duke on. Where is he? Let me get my screens up. There you are, here's Duke. Duke, you're live. Looking fabulous in LA. D for Duke, we like that mug. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi, everyone. Great to have you on here. So tell everyone just a little bit about you before we, we shoot into the segment. Sure. Hi, I'm Duke Colaveridian, based in Los Angeles, California. I've uh, been doing weddings for uh, close to 20 years. Um, just specialize in all the glamorous, beautiful, sexy, fashion-forward weddings, um, ethnic, um, and just uh, having a ball doing all all these amazing weddings. Uh, it's a perfect time to shoot weddings um, for photographers like me, um, especially in where we are. And I guess Instagram's completely changed up, you know, your business and just the wedding industry in general. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's taken us to a different world uh, as far as like our exposure, the quality of photos and weddings that we, uh, we do and we get, uh, the clientele, um, the, the followers, they're just amazing and uh, you know, it's changed my business into, um, in, in so many aspects, it's, uh, I could spend hours talking about it. Yes. Well, we'll have to, Duke has, what is it, 90 what thousand? 98,000 or something. <laughs> 90,000. It's, it's going up. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's it, great. It's incredible. Follow Duke Images on Instagram if you don't already. So let's get started. What are the most important things to look for in a potential photographer when you're doing your research? Well, um, having shot weddings for the last 17, 18 years, um, I think the number one thing that I always see bride and grooms research or ask about is uh, um, how many years a photographer has been in the business. Um, and um, more so, um, how many uh, years has have, have, has a photographer done Jewish weddings? Uh -huh. uh, you know, in search of a photographer, you want to make sure you're you know you're going after a photographer who's done many Jewish weddings, understands the ritual, the culture, 
the traditional Jewish ceremony reception, even the photos with the family, it's so dynamic. Uh, where do you do these photographs? You know, like families want their photos by the fupa, you know. Uh, so photographer needs to have like prior knowledge of everything about a Jewish wedding um, and have the an anticipation when that moment comes where the groom is about to smash the glass or they're about to put the bride and groom on the chair during the horror dance or, you know, if the bride is going around the circle around the groom, you know, these are important moments that, you know, a photographer has to pay attention to, has to anticipate. Um, so that's the number one uh, important thing, the experience of the photographer. I'm just showing a couple of images um, while you speak of Seppi and Omid's wedding that really oh, yes. highlight great, great your, your expertise and, and, you know, yeah. how many things there are to capture at a Jewish wedding. It really is action-packed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, since you're showing that uh, this particular wedding, uh, style of a photographer is also very important for the bride and groom to look for. Um, you know, we live in an era where um, there's so much Instagram photos, there's so much themes of a wedding that goes around. So I think the bride and groom really need to understand what their theme is. Um, is their theme candid and outdoorsy wedding? You know, are, are they having their wedding at the ranch or a vineyard or a garden? Or are they having a beautiful ballroom, whimsical, very dramatic kind of a, a wedding ceremony and reception? And with that accordingly, you have to find your right photographer. Um, you shouldn't go hire a photographer that uh, doesn't shoot any ballroom type weddings and I expect them to deliver what you're looking for because you might be in for a surprise, um, you know, and vice versa. So uh, understand the theme of photography that you're after and it starts from your dress, it starts from your venue, it start, it goes with the theme of your wedding and also then the photographer. So, um, you know, style is very important. Some um, couples want to have these very glamorous looking photographs, um, very over the top, you know, very monumental photos. Some just want to have a blast and just walk around the lake and just do some candid shots. So every photographer is going to be catering to that kind of style. So you have to make sure you find that particular uh, photographer. So um, that's very important, the, the style and also consistency. You know, consistency is another topic that I could spend a few minutes talking about. We've got a question from yeah. Zane saying, I've noticed all your photos have beautiful light. Is it important that a photographer brings lighting? And also, I think that ties into venue. You know, if you're getting married in a, in a venue without lighting, as you need to know that your photographer can work in all those conditions, right? Definitely. I, uh, I, you know, in my personal experience, I travel every location, whether it's uh, outdoors or indoors, with uh, multiple lights. Um, the reason for that is even if you're shooting in the outdoors, if your couple are standing in a very dark and shaded area under a big tree and it's very shaded, um, you need to create that three-dimensional look um, to create that beautiful lighting for the couple because at the end of the day, you're not shooting the landscape or the architecture, you're shooting the bride and groom that are part of an element into that environment. So you need to bring them out, you need to separate them and just simply you have to make them look great, you know, so they love it. You know, they can't look the same as if you were to shoot it with your iPhone, you know. So, yes, lighting plays a big factor. Um, but when you're going into the ballrooms and the ceremony sites, um, lighting is a huge deal. You know, you have to create that um, special effect with the lighting that we do. You have to, um, the, you know, their families want to be making sure they're getting the best lighting during the, their portraits at the hoopa. Um, during their first dance, you know, we create different types of lighting. When we do their details in their room, although they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their decor and lighting, we still have to like more, you know, do a, do a more perfect job on creating better lighting for them. So lighting is a big deal. Again, going back to what I said, you have to make sure you find a photographer that understands lighting, you know, for sure. So that's very important. Good question. And can Instagram help couples find a wedding photographer? Where do they start? There's so much inspiration on Instagram. How can, how, do, yeah, is, how is, start the wrong place? <laughs> is it the wrong well, place you know, to start? I think Instagram works on both sides of the aisle. For my personal experience, as you mentioned, Instagram has changed my business to a, a, a different zone, a different world, you know, lips and bounds. Um, but for the bride and groom's point of view and their, um, you know, for their, their side, 
I think Instagram is the best tool for them to uh, find not only their photographer, but all the vendors for that matter. But especially for photographers, it's such a visual, visualistic thing that they're doing. And it's all about photos and creating artwork. Um, so uh, you can literally compare photographers within an Instagram site, um, go through their everyday, uh, their everyday postings and Insta story and see how they function through their Instagram, uh, how active they are, you know, while, while you're, maybe if you're looking at their videos or your, their Insta story, you get to see how they talk to the couple that they're photographing, how they, ex you know, execute the certain photographs, how fast they are, how speedy they are, how um, consistent they are. So, um, yeah, I, I think Instagram is as important for the writing rooms as it is for the photographers, yes. And what's your best tip on, on for couples on how to look amazing and feel comfortable in their photographs? Great they, question. I think... Uh, <laughs> Everyone that, can see the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it starts with understanding, especially for a bride, understanding their figure, their body type, their height, start with the dress and then lead that to the hair and makeup. Um, you want to make sure you're getting a dress that complements not only you but also the theme of the wedding that you have. If you have a ballroom type wedding, then you want to get a dress that's, that's very sort of flowy and it's, it's, you know, it has a beautiful sexiness to it. It's going to create like this princess type kind of a flow for you. If you're walking down the aisle by the beach, you can't do a dress like that. So first get a nice dress that it, or gown that complements you and the theme of your wedding. But also hair and makeup. You know, we, uh, in my experience, we constantly have to deal with brides not being happy on their wedding day. They're like, oh, my hair isn't good or my makeup isn't good. So make sure that, um, you know, you're doing a trial session with your hair and makeup. You see beforehand how they're going to execute your hair and makeup. If there is going to be any tweaks and changes you want to make, do it before the wedding because the timeline and time frame of a wedding day is is so tight that you have no time to tell the uh, to the makeup or hairstylist to change it up and do this or do that because then it's going to delay your entire wedding day. Especially the photo itself, you know, you're going to have to compromise a lot of photographs. You're going to be very upset not having enough photos at the end. So as, as far as photography goes, these are my tips, advice. And we're almost at 15 minutes. I want to ask you just one or two more questions and then I will let you go. But we'll must do another session where we dive much deeper. Um, sure. I want to know I'm what your to. favorite moment or tradition is at a Jewish wedding. What do you love photographing at a Jewish wedding? Well, I have two, three of them, and I could talk about those, but um, I guess I would say my single most favorite moment at a Jewish wedding, and it's because, um, and I'm going to paint a picture, it's because every person, every guest that's in, in uh, present at the wedding, and it could even be the vendors such as photo and video and the DJ and the event planners, they're all just like sitting at the edge of their seats, and, uh, and I'm talking about the guests especially, They're, they just can't wait for that moment where the, the groom smashes the glass, which is a perfect name for you, and everyone's just ready to like just cheerfully shout mazel tov and hooray and clap, and you know, the whole, whole place goes electric. And you know, after I've done so many of these weddings, I still get goosebumps when that moment comes. So I think, and I've shot so many different ethnic weddings, um, and they all have certain rituals that's very special and momentous and, um, and you know, unforgettable times. But I think the smashing of the glass, the breaking of the glass would top all of them. It, it's, it's the only favorite, uh, you know, it's the, the best favorite thing that I see in Jewish uh, weddings. There was only one name for my blog, and it's exactly yeah. it. it's <laughs> the moment, isn't it? It's the moment. Exactly. Um, it's... There's nothing like it. Um, yeah. I mean, Duke, Duke is a big part of our VIB club. He is going to be doing sessions inside there. And um, I know you're also offering a special gift for any VIBs. So we're so oh, yes. thrilled to have you part of our VIB club and to have you. Yeah, my future, yeah. 
Q&A. I can't wait for future Q&A. Yeah, we're going to do Q&As inside the VIB Club, so make sure you sign up so you can benefit from Duke's expertise. Very good. You're getting so many loves and likes, and Seema saying the best photographer, and all your fans are, are, are loving this, as are we. Thank and you. Thank we're you. only keeping it short because it's the summer, and we've got so much to fit in, but we are definitely going to dive much deeper with Duke. Inside definitely. The VIP Looking forward to the future. Oh, it's been such a huge pleasure to have Thanks. you on. I'm going to close thank with the you. live, but I'll just say a quick goodbye to you, just the two of us. Um, All right. So thank you once again, Duke. It's been incredible. Such an honor. Very good. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Here we are for smashing segment number, what is it, Claire, number 10? <laughs> 10 of 12. I'm here with one of my dearest friends. Well, she's mm -hmm. become a friend since we're working together. This is wonderful Sarah Gibbs, who's mm -hmm. our resident STG features writer. Um, she's never been seen before on camera, so I'm the glass. No, I'm a rare. And we'll get Claire on camera session. in a minute, too. <laughs> And Mr. STG, everyone's here tonight. Um, so we've got Sarah on because this segment is all about how to create that perfect wedding hashtag. And this is a big part of our VIB club, which we've been telling everyone about. Um, sorry, you've got your camera face on. I haven't let you look have. it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my... <laughs> we've frozen um, like that. We know that wedding hashtags are really important for you guys. <laughs> and we want to help you come up with a perfect wedding hashtag. So this is going to be a big part of the club. Sarah's on board inside the club to help come up with those perfect wedding hashtags. We thought we'd give you a few tips first in case you just want to do them on your own. And then we're going to go right into, hi Anastasia. We're going to go right into some examples. We had some couples submit um, a few details about themselves. And Sarah's going to tell you what magic she came up with. Yes. Uh, wow, how to make a wedding hashtag. Well, the first step is to be a professional comedy writer. Um, <laughs> if you're not, give up. No, you can't. No, I'm joking. Did I say that Sarah's a comedy writer when she's not working for Smashing the Glass? I'm that not is sure right. I said that. So, yes. Yeah. Um, no, you don't have to be a professional comedy writer to write some silly puns based <laughs> on your name. Um, and that's really where you should start with a wedding hashtag is with your names. Um, have a play around and see if there's anything that, that fits. So, for example, um, there might be a movie, a romantic movie or a funny saying or a romantic saying that rhymes with one or both of your names. Um, you might be able to combine your names in a way that's funny or interesting. Um, and if you're not getting anything out of your names, um, make a list of things like your venue, your hobbies, things that people know you for, that horrible couple name that everyone keeps calling you, <laughs> use that. Um, and your wedding date, that's always helpful, um, especially if your hashtag is taken. Uh, really important to check if your hashtag is taken because if it is, you could be on someone else's feed mm -hmm. and everything could get mixed up and you'll lose all your wedding stuff in goodness knows what. So Absolutely. Yeah. You want to come up with something original and fun. It's another part, another way to brand your wedding, which we know is really, really all important to you. We wanted to mm. make sure that the VIB club covers everything from rabbis to hashtags, as we say. Yeah. So, and I have to say, join the VIB club, because <laughs> if I'd had this woman as my virtual maid of honor when I was planning my wedding, it would have been so much less stressful. I wish that had been Tell allowed. everyone a little bit about your wedding. Uh, so my <laughs> wedding was a Jewish wedding. So my husband is not Jewish, and I am. Um, and we like to say that he married in uh, rather than me marrying He's out. fully embraced so. the culture. Who wouldn't? Yeah, he has indeed. He is now significantly more Jewish than I am. Um, but he's basically a rabbi at this point. I don't know what's happening. And he's still not converted? He, he is not. But he, he did. He went to a talk the other night at JW3 and I wasn't invited. I don't know what's happening. He's taken over. It's out of control. Um, but my wedding was pretty much a DIY wedding. I did everything myself and it was very stressful. And there were also lots of things that I thought I had to do because they were tradition. And um, it Smashing the glass had been around when, well, it was, but if I'd been more involved and engaged. I, I didn't think, think it was, actually. Was it not? Yeah. It was, so if you'd I started in 2013. Ah, so just the year, so I just missed it. So, mm. yeah, that wasn't my fault. Um, but yeah, if it'd been around, I think I would have done things really differently. I probably would have made a speech at my own wedding. I like talking. I think you said, yeah. was it the Bedeccan you would have done differently? And things I, like that? yeah, I think I, there were things like the Bedeccan I thought, you know, 
that's a bit archaic and I don't really want to do that. And also I want to, I, I did want to have my grand entrance. I wanted to kind of everyone to see me for the first time when I, when I walked in. Yeah, I wanted the moment. Um, and I think there are lots of ways to have that moment. And if I'd had Karen around, I would have known that. And what's happening is we know that you all love smashing the glass and, and it is a great resource, but by now we've been going for almost five years. There's so much content on there that people kind of get mm. lost and we're getting questions every day. Um, Today we had a question about help with Mother the Bride and an Italian wedding on a budget and isn't it literally we get 10, 20 emails a day. And I, I used to, I've been offering my one to one consulting and now I'm booked up with that for months and months. So I want to be, we all want to, as a team, want to be able to help lots more people on a deeper level, which is why we came up with a VIB club. And Sarah's been involved with the project for months, so working exciting. on yeah. so many different parts of it. And there's just so many fabulous benefits, um, which we'll, we'll talk about them in a, in a yes. bit. Um, but if you want to find the benefits yourself, click on the link above the Smash uh, VIB Club link. Up there? Up there. So any other tips before we launch into our examples? Um, yeah, I think just, um, you know, if you can find something like punny and witty, do. Um, you can also get your friends and family involved. So if you're if you're struggling to come up with something, make it a competition, and uh, you know have yeah. have your friends and family compete to write your wedding hashtag. Maybe give them a little something at your wedding, get them involved, um, and it makes people aware of it as well. Um, also, put your wedding hashtag on everything. Um, so if you're sending out um, evites like paperless posts, which a lot of people do, put your hashtag on that. Paper invites, put your hashtag on that. Wedding dress hashtag. <laughs> Straight that forehead. Yeah. Um, and also what I was going to say was inside the VIB club, it's a kind of group effort. Yes, um, Sarah's going to help. I'm going to help. I think another comedy writer is going to help. Yeah. But it's also about the group effort, like all the VIB brides together in the club. Maybe someone's got some better ideas. You know, it's all about helping each other and contributing. Mm. Um, it's very much about the community. Absolutely. So um, that's going to be so fun. Um, so... What about some mistakes to avoid? Are there any mistakes? Oh, yes. Well, obviously, the first one is going with a hashtag that's taken. Uh, <laughs> and the, se the second one is, so definitely make sure that you capitalize the beginning of each letter. So um, oh, one like infamous example of that is when <laughs> Susan Boyle launched her album <laughs> with the hashtag Susan Album Party. Which, um, am I allowed to say this on the Yes, podcast? it's gone Which, nine o'clock. Obviously, it's gone nine o'clock. If you've got but any not in kids, America, yeah, so. block their ears, <laughs> just put them to bed right now. Um, yeah, so the hashtag that, um, that actually read on the internet was Sue's Anal Bum Party. <laughs> uh, so you do want to, yeah, make sure that you don't accidentally write something. I mean, if that's what you want, great. If that's your kind of wedding, get on you. But uh, yeah, if that's not what you want, just, just double check that it, doesn't say what you don't want it to say. And if you capitalize the first letter of each word, it makes it a lot clearer. I, what a hot tip. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. um, any other tips or shall we launch in? Um, I think we can launch in. Let's because we launch can, in. Yeah, we had, learn by doing. We had some um, couples submit their, we had quite a lot actually. We've just picked out, I think, four couples. Yep. So hopefully you guys are watching. Um, let's yep. start with, should we start with, who do you want to start with? Uh, top. You like, yep, we'll start at the top. Okay, so we um, had Rita Bachman and Eric Narodovich submitting right. their are uh, um, submitting their details. So um let me put that in the in that in the comments. Actually, I don't know if I oh I can I? I don't know if I can. Um so you could see the names because they're quite funny. I wonder if I can somehow comment. I don't know if I can. Um You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> um let me send it to Claire and then she can she can pop it in. I'll send it should I send it to you on whatever you can. Okay, I'll send it on I'll send it on um if I say okay, if I send Claire, it on Claire, I will forward yeah. you the email. Hold oh, on one second. Claire the email. Look at that. Twenty eighteen. These, these guys know what they're doing. <laughs> okay. So Amazing. Amazing. Claire's going to pop them in the comments yeah. so you can uh, shortly so you can read them all for yourself. You can now get information from one side of a room to another. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's yeah. go. Okay, so uh, Rita Bachman and Eric Narodovich. Uh, I'll shout out to my writing partner, Kat Sadler, for this, who will, I hope, be involved yeah, as well. Also help um, because she came up with a few of these. Um, 
But uh, for Vicha for Pora, love that. That's, I'm cats. Upset. that's my very, favorite. very good. Well done, Kat. <laughs> um, if you want to just go simple, Bakmanovich wedding, you can combine your names. Um, Arita, like the movie Avita, which actually was quite sad. Probably don't use that one. <laughs> I think that's terrible. Uh, Narod to Paradise. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So combining yeah. The, the names, but using a, a nice phrase. Yeah. Use little bits of your names if you can. Um, combine your names. So another way we've done that is, for example, is it Jeanette Grossman and Jeanette's Chris. Jeanette's been commenting on some others. Yes, so hello Jeanette. Watching. There she is. Uh, and Chris Pakanowski, is that, have I said your names right? I apologize if I butchered them. <laughs> uh, we had a uh, hashtag the big Pakanowski, uh, hashtag Mr. and Mrs. Pacman. Love it. And Pakanow and forever. Oh, sorry. so clever, was, uh, so yeah. clever. You need Sora's help in the VIB club. Um, sorry, just to tell you like that, but <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be such a fun. Oh, Jeanette said hello, so excited. Hello. Um, Claire's going to put those hashtags for you in the comments so you can yeah. look at them yourself, Jeanette, awesome. and tell us which one was was your favorite when, when they're inside. Here they are. That's Rita's. Um, and then Claire, Jeanette's was at the bottom. Jeanette Grossman and Chris... Pakanowski. You've got some great surnames, though, um, Jeanette. Um, Pakanow and Forever is the winner. What a nice Woo! one. That's Kat Sadler. Well done, Kat Sadler. You, <laughs> you win. I'll just go home. I'm not... Um, and Kelsey King, I know, was watching earlier. So we've got Kelsey King yeah. and Laser Spittlene. What great names you, you had. Well, or was awesome. it a challenge? It was a challenge because they, they weren't immediately obvious. Um, but we had hashtag Kings of NY. Love it. Um, and uh, Set Your Lasers to Fun. Love it. Um, Kel says yes. That's clever. Um, Kel with S E Y S. Wedding of Kings. So we, we had a few for these. We'll post them all in the comments. <laughs> and we asked for, what questions did we ask for them? Oh, we asked a lot of questions. Actually, I left out an essential question of that. What's your wedding date? That was silly. Yes. But we asked for names. Um, we asked for your wedding venue. Uh, we asked for, for your location, your hobbies. Um, should have also asked for your couple name. So uh, What's those couple are, name? Um, you know, what your friends call you, like um, Kim Ye or... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, Jeanette says his nickname was actually Pac-Man in high school, so that's a great one too. Oh, awesome. I love that one. Yeah. Um, yes, any more for Kelsey and Lisa? Or um, did, we, did we get through them? I think we might have gone through them. But I love if, Kel if says be... yes. I love that. It's just so clever and so fun. Um, oh, this looks fun. Um, Everyone's talking about that cat saddler around the water cooler. <laughs> she's, she's killing it. <laughs> Michaela Tenner and David Miller. We've got. Okay, so uh, this one's a bit silly. Uh, there's a movie called We're the Millers, so there I want to know We're the Millers. Oh, I love um, <laughs> in, But there are some better ones. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, one of cats, hashtag try a little tenorness. Love it. Uh, hashtag muzzle of Millers. Uh, hashtag one in a million. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Hashtag all Miller, no filler. Brilliant. <laughs> so, these are, these are all, I'm just reading me. Cat's ones. You're getting a lot of crying yeah, my eyes out. Amazing. Well. Yeah. Uh, hashtag love me tenor. Brilliant. Uh, David and his Mikala. That's one that only Jewish Brilliant. people will get. So Kala. there's a Kala, Kala of course. Yes. Well, that's it, because we've got Jewish people, comedy yeah. writers, we know it all, we've got it all. Um, um, and we think, do we have one more? That, that's it. That's it. Those that's are it. the lucky four couples. Um, yeah. But like I say, now uh, in the VIB club, we've got Sora and Kat that are going to help with your wedding hashtags. But also, I reckon there's going to be the collective group participation as mm -hmm. well. Um, we always get some great ideas from the community. Debbie's saying, had a bride and groom recently, Tammy and Max. They they named their hashtag Tampax Get Wed. Brilliant. <laughs> We approve. That's great. That's great. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So, gosh, we're ready 15 minutes in. I can't believe how quickly these are going. Oh, so much um, fun. So flies. much fun. This woman has been going since what? Uh, 5.30? 10 million years. <laughs> She's standing here. I'm loving here. it. I'm loving it. Let's do this. Amazing. Thing. I'm going to keep going. I'm absolutely buzzed. Yeah. I love it. Um, 
So yeah, just to show. Have I got? The, I haven't got my pad. Oh yes. I oh, have. you have. Just oh. to show you. Also in the VIB club, you get one of these really cool yeah. smash glass pouches for under the chuppah with our lovely logo inside, and it's just the most Instagrammable thing. They are only for members. You cannot get one if you are not a VIB. So make sure you sign up on the link above. And what else do they get with VIB? They get discounts, gifts, weekly bridal masterclasses, ask the rabbi sessions, um, bespoke advice from me. I'm going to be personally on hand to help you with your wedding, um, at your beck and call with anything you need, and my team, and my network of wedding experts. It's really, we think it's really good value for yeah. you. And especially, there's a special launch price for the first 100 members. So. Do Hurry. sign up. Don't miss Hurry. out on that. Good. Um, Definitely don't miss out on that. No. Uh, <laughs> and I have to say that advice from Karen is something you want because, Aww, yeah, you. someone like Karen in your corner when you're planning your wedding, she could not be more helpful. She Aww. is literally the most helpful woman in the world. She will do anything for anyone Aww. and join the club to find Aww. out just how much. Thank you, Sarah. Oh. I love you. I love working with you. My brother's commented in, from Florida, has Karen had a JD and Coke to keep her going? Have I had a JD and Coke, Jeremy? Have you had a JD and Coke? Yet. Not yet. Times have changed, bro. You That's see, I don't need JD and Coke to keep going anymore. <laughs> That's my husband commenting, Andre, great one. <laughs> so we're going to have to, I can't be hopping this game, we're going to have to wrap up because you know who we've got on next? Monique <gasps> Hulier herself. Amazing. The superstar wedding dress designer. Um, She's more than a wedding dress designer. She's like the owner of one of the biggest fashion houses in the world. She is coming on live to tell us all about the big wedding dress trends for 2018 and 19. It's a real exclusive. We were really excited about that. So um, we're going to have to close this up so I can call her on Skype and, and organize all that for you guys. So we'll be back here um, at 10 o'clock UK time. Pop in the comments if you've been going, if you've been watching from 5.30. Because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> if someone's genuinely been watching since 5.30, I want to hear from you. Win a um, prize. Yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> I just put you on the spot there. Just a prize. We'll get a special prize yeah. for you, but you have to somehow prove it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're having so much fun. Thank you, Sarah. That was Thank so you. great. I loved it. Thank and... you for letting me talk nonsense at you. <laughs> Thank you. We love Sarah. And we'll be back here in 15 minutes. That's 10 o'clock UK time, 5 o'clock in the afternoon in New York, and 2 o'clock in the afternoon in LA. We actually have all the clocks up. I can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> so take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Should I be pinning and then say, oh, you're here. One second, Monique, I need you to be quiet while I'm on air. Sorry to tell you that. <laughs> so everybody, we are live. Um, it is 10 o'clock at night here. We have been going for five hours on the Smashing Summit. And we, I know that you are loving every little bit of it. Thank you for all the lovely feedback and comments. We are having the best time. But now this is really where we're getting into the hot stuff. We are going to, I'm going to be bringing on the one and only Monique Lulier to talk all about wedding dress trends for 2008. Real exclusive. He is here to answer questions. Make sure you have popping your questions in the comments because this is your one chance to get them answered live by Monique. Um, I'm going to bring my on and just say a couple of sentences about my of you over mine. So let's bring Monique on. Here she is. Hey, you're live, Monique. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It is, such a, it is such a huge pleasure to have you on here. Monique, you know, your dresses are the most featured on Smashing the Glass Real Jewish Weddings in five years. Yours are the most featured. Our readers absolutely adore your designs. Yay, thank you so much. It's an honor to be on live with you all. Oh, thank you. Um, I went actually to see your trunk shirt at Brown's Bride last week. We love Brown's Bride, and I think they're the exclusive stockist for many Glulier in the UK. And they were fabulous, kind of daring, elegant, um, fun and formal. It's really exciting, your new collection. Can you tell us about, you know, what's hot right now and what's inspiring you and, and your latest designs and what brides can expect? Well, for the latest collection, um, I was very excited to see you know, a lot of new things that I put out there received so well by the brides. And, and one trend that has really taken on is this the sheer long sleeve. Um, it's so nice for me and refreshing for me to see that brides are open to seeing other necklines aside, of, aside from strapless dresses. So this was a wonderful um, thing for me. I also love, 
um, these new silhouettes where they're exaggerated skirts and they're more sculptural. That's another trend that I'm showing and brides seem to respond to that and these, you know, extended trains, you know, like the more magical and the more romantic, the better. And then there's also been a shift where there's the other girl who wants a more modern, closer to the body, less beading so more minimal and more sleek i might say so so those are the three you know big trends that are happening right now in bridal fantastic we're going to show some images of your work and your beautiful designs uh, shortly um we're getting so much love for you coming through the screens we've got sergio saying i'm a young fashion designer from portugal i love your work send me a kiss please <laughs> requests for kisses <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> and how can brides make trends their own? I mean, should we listen to trends? Should we? Should we? How, how do you kind of work out what what's right for you with a wedding dress? It feels very overwhelming for a lot of brides. All the options. Well, I always say, you know, it's actually a great time to be a bride right now because there's so many so many things to choose from. Bridal is more fashionably infused these days than it was when I started my career 21 years ago. So I think as a bride, you've got multiple ways to go. And I always say you can listen and look at the trends, but you should really listen to that voice deep down inside when you're trying on the dresses and be true to yourself. Does it feel like it's your personal style? Is it something that you're going to love in 10 years? I think, you know, you have to go with your gut in the end. And what looks good on you may not look good on everybody, but, but that's the choice you should make. Fantastic advice. Um, so we're showing a couple of your designs now that are very much um, showing the shoulders, you know, this kind of, is it, do you call them arm cuffs or what do you call them? They're, they're so fun. They add a lot of dress. I, I can't see the image, but I think from the description, it's like a beautifully draped gazar silhouette, like a trumpet silhouette. That's the one. And the, reason, the reason I came up with those sleeves, they're actually detachable sleeves, is because I listen to my brides and they're like, a lot of them are like, should I wear a second dress to change into for the reception? You know, I want to do sleeves, but I, I can't commit. So that I thought, you know, how great it would be to like do it all in one. So, so you could wear the sleeves for the ceremony and then for the reception, you can just shimmy them off and have two looks in one and, and yet stay in your gown because after all, I mean, the night goes by so quickly and you're so emotionally attached to your dress. I don't know if you necessarily need to change the entire look. That's right. So that's how I came up with that design. And the two in one look is a really big thing for our, for our audience. They love that, you know, the ceremony is, is a bit more serious, a bit more covered up, and then they want that reveal for the party. So I love, I saw in Brown's Bride, you're doing detachable sleeves, which were fabulous. Yes. Another thing I love to work with is lace. It's been a staple in my collection since the very beginning, you know, and, and again, this season I said, instead of changing the whole dress, how do we make components of it detachable and that's you know where you see I had long sleeves that were attached in the shoulder again for the ceremony keeping them on for the reception just simply removing them and then you can even let your hair down and change it up so then you have two entirely different looks it's not just the dress that transforms but also your look and I love that actually it's very very modest but it's very very sexy you've managed to do both <laughs> well I always like you know wedding dresses need to be you know, very tastefully done. And it's it's a fine line between elegant and, and beautiful and vulgar. So I always try to trend, I mean, tread on the side where it's always elegant and appropriate. I have to say, I think your collection, I, I found it very liberating, actually. There was a lot of fun there. Um, a few risks, it felt like, you know, it was, it was just fun i loved it so many new details and that jacket for under the chuppah i'm gonna find it i'm gonna show that jacket it's a must um i, I the jacket you're talking about is a little capelet right and it's it's a capelet with like beads that are strung with there's there's some pearls and, and diamond beads and so you can put it on and it looks like an oversized necklace at the same time and i thought how wonderful to transform you know a simple fitted satin trumpet silhouette and put that jacket on I thought would take it to the next level you know and there's the and, and that jacket you can wear afterwards too you can wear that for an anniversary or even you know once you're married down the, the down the line and you want to wear a slip dress and you just put that on and it's a piece that you'll always have in your closet so 
we all want to be able to wear something from our wedding after the big day. We, you know, that, that's the ultimate um, ideal. So Annie's asking, she's saying, do you agree that necklines, fabrics, and shapes are important? I think necklines, fabrics, and shapes are very important. I mean, that is the foundation of a wedding dress, you know, and, and me, the design always starts with a beautiful piece of fabric that I work with in my hand. It's how I drape it, put it on the model's body, where I come up with the ideas of what to do with it. Um, one of the fabrics I love working with is, is Chantilly Lace, and it's because it's very delicate and light and airy. It has a sense of tradition, but the way I cut it and with the sheerness, it's sexy and modern at the same time. So, so I love that fabric. I also feel like the foundation, like how the inner inners of a gown are cut are so important with how you, the fit is of your gown and how you feel. So I feel like, you know, the structure from the inside is so important in a wedding dress. And tell us about this incredible design and lace collection, this cape, this kind of over cape. Um, I just think, so gorgeous. Um, under the I'm going to guess what that is again because I don't have any images. So I'm I'm yes. guessing it's a tool cape. It is. It is. It's, it's a, a tool shorter cape. dress okay, so on the, the shorter dress. dress. Yes. And so what I love about that look right there is me pushing the envelope a little bit for bridal. I wanted to shorten the hemline because, you know, I've spent so much time focusing on accessories as well. And so I always feel like it's more modern to see a beautifully designed boot or a beautifully designed shoe like you're seeing here. This is a pump that's studded with pearls. And I think with a shorter hemline, you know, it looks more modern to see all these elements um, when you're seeing a bridal look. So, so that was me pushing that hemline. At the same time, I also wanted to throw on a cape because I thought, you know, being covered up sometimes is, is more sexy because you're leaving more to the imagination. So I loved how she's covered up. And then again, for the party later on, she can take that off. And, and I think that looks more fantasy, more modern and, and the right way to go. And Donna from, from Brown's Bride um, is saying a big, fabulous hello from Caroline and the team at Brown's Bride, your exclusive you can talk this, of your breathtaking gown. We love, love, love Brown's Bride. We adore them. I love Brown's Pride, and they have my partner from the very beginning. Um, and what's so wonderful about the team in, in Brown's is that when when a bride comes in, they walk you through my entire collection, and they work with you to. You can also customize some of the pieces to what you really are looking for. So we can take, let's say, a sleeve from a dress and put it with the bottom of another dress, and and they can facilitate with that. You know, so they can really tailor a look to you specifically, and. Um, and you and create a one of kind dress that way. You provide the sensational designs, but their service is second to none, and it goes hand in hand, right? <laughs> it really does, and and these partnerships that I've forged through the years with different retailers are really, you know, so important to me because they represent the collection, you know, to the rest of the world. So I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Annie's asking, is there a lace for everybody? <laughs> Well, you know what? There, there's lace. There is a lace for everybody because there's so many different kinds of laces in the marketplace. You've got Chantilly lace, which is the lighter weight lace, and then you've got the re-embroidered or lanson lace, which is the heavier lace, and then you've got also printed lace, and then you've got chiffon where we print a lace design on it, so you think it's lace. So there's so many different kinds of laces. So I'm going to say yes. There's a lace for everybody. And I'm also loving the more structured dresses in your lace collection. I've got one of those up. It's my favorite in the collection. It's kind of a bust like this, and then it's kind of draped, and then a kind of layering, and then a full skirt. Do you know the one I mean? Is it strapless? Yes. And is it um, a very, like, structured skirt? Yes, it's very, very structured. It's stunning. <laughs> well, I think you're talking about the Alexandra dress from my collection, and it's and it's really all about shape there. You see the silhouette of the bride, it's molded onto her, and then you see this exaggerated skirt. But what I love about that dress is that even if it feels so grand, it's, it's very light to the touch. You know, you can carry it with one hand, and even if it has all that volume, it's the way we engineered that dress. And so for me, that's a modern way of doing a wedding dress. It's about the inner linings to create that shape, but when you put it on, you just float in the room. And it's quite majestic and regal and 
She's a favorite right now. That's what I would choose. Um, I'm obsessed with it. We're getting so many hearts and lights flying all over the screen. Everybody's loving this interview and loving your dresses. Awesome. Wonderful. And just to let everyone know at home, if you're just tuning in, this is your chance to ask Monique anything about wedding dresses, friends, about her and her business. It's such a wonderful exclusive. So do pop anything in the comments. We're here to help. And and you grow up partly in Paris, is that right? Um, that elegance and style is part of your your design DNA, that kind of growing up in Paris, would you say? Well, actually, I actually I have a French father and, and a Philippine mother, and I grew up in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And I um, always, as a little girl, loved fashion, and I had a very glamorous mother, and I said, you know, one day I want to get into fashion design. So I went to fashion school, and then I was a young bride at 21 looking for a wedding dress, and that's how this whole company started so I was I was 21 years old looking for a dress I felt like there were not a lot of fashionable options at the time this was 1993 and I said I think this is what I'm going to be doing and all that and so that started the idea and after my wedding in 95 I started my first collection with five dresses and I guess you can say the rest is kind of history how we've grown the company since and I think and everyone seems to be able to pronounce my name now. When in the very beginning they struggled with Lulie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I certainly feel that you've got that kind of all your dresses are sort of light and airy and look effortless, but but there is a sort of rejection of the conventional and formal, if you know what I mean. I think you were I believe you're one of the first designers that put fashion into bridal and it's it's amazing. You're still ahead of everyone. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, so um, I'm hoping to continue that. You know, whenever I approach designing my bridal collections, because now I, I do multiple collections a year. I do four ready-to-wear collections. I have four diffusion collections as well in, in the more contemporary, you know, direction. I have my accessories and I have my bridal collections. But what I love about having all those divisions is that when it's time to design bridal again, I'm so excited to see whites and ivories. I'm so excited to see these pale blushes. And I always push myself and challenge myself to say, where are we going next? You know, like it's, it's got to evolve. Even if you're limited pretty much with colors and, and fabrications, it's like, I would like to see it evolve season after season so i try to do that and can i just ask you are you allowed to say what we can expect from your collections in upcoming seasons anything you any clues <laughs> more experimentation that's all i can say yes oh, we're excited we're excited and right. one last question before we go where can we purchase um your gowns in in america in new york and la you have your flagship you have well i have a flagship store in los angeles i also have a flagship store in new york and you know Browns has it in London and then um, in lots of other fine stores around the world. Oh, we're going to close it up now. It's, it's, it's 15 minutes and we're going to keep it short and sweet. But we hope that you'll be our guest again perhaps later on here, maybe with some models and we can see those dresses come to life in the live. It would be a huge pleasure. A pleasure is all mine. So, yes, I'd love to see you again. Oh. And have a wonderful night. And thank, thank you once you. again from all of us here in London. You take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hi, everybody. It's Karen Cinnamon from Smashing the Glass. We are at the final, the peak, the summit of the summit. And we are so excited with this final segment. This is a real exclusive. This is amazing. We have got Mindy Weiss, who is, let's face it, right? She doesn't think so, but I'm telling you, she's so modest and amazing, but she really is the most sought after wedding planner on the on the planet and she's one of the tribe she's jewish too who could be better so we've got mindy waiting in the wings i'm about to bring her on um you all went crazy for her five minutes with interview a couple of months ago and this is just even better she's coming on live this is your chance to ask mindy anything she's so much fun so ask anything to do with your wedding She's going to be telling us some amazing wedding ideas, but it really is. Hi, Lisa. Lisa's joining from London. It really is your chance to ask questions and get them answered live. Come on, what could be better? So, 
Mindy's written books. She is just the biggest wedding industry superstar. She's based out of Beverly Hills. Um, she's now a lifestyle expert with books and product lines and everything going. But when you see her, she's just a dream to, to, to have on and talk to. And I'm so excited. I'm going to, I'm going to bring you on now, Mindy. There you okay, are. Hey, I'm here. Do you see us on your screen? Yes. Looking fabulous, I have to say. <laughs> so how, how are, I got dressed for you today. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, everyone's so thrilled to, to, to see you live. Um, so where shall we start? Tell everyone a little bit about you and, and, and what, what, okay. what, what, what you want to tell everyone about today with amazing ways to personalize your wedding. Okay, well, I've been in the business about 30 years. I started in the invitation business, and that took me into the party business. And from there, I started branching off into really the things that I was really interested in, like decor and the details and what was going to make my events different than the world's events. Because as you know, there's a lot of us wedding planners out there now. It's such a saturated market, isn't it? It's incredibly busy. And I, you know, as I get older, a little bit older, <laughs> I want to stay relevant. And that's what us wedding planners have to do. So one of the things that I really push, because when your bride and groom or, or you bride and grooms out there are getting married, chances are a lot of your friends are also getting married. So you don't want to go to these cookie cutter weddings because when you show up, you're like, oh, God, here we go again. What is going to make your wedding different than anybody else's? And the one thing that you have that they don't have is a different personality and different things that you love. And what when people think about you guys, what do they think about? Well, maybe the bride's really funny or maybe the groom loves wine. So there are certain ways that I love to personalize weddings, you know, and one of them basically is with food because it's a very um, big deal when people show up to a wedding and the food is so much better than what they expect Absolutely. because, you know, a lot of them don't have high expectations for wedding food, but a great way to personalize it is to add in some of your favorite dishes. Mm. So if you and your groom love mac and cheese, okay? Here in California, LA, mac and cheese, for some reason, is a good comfort food. People love it. Yes. Or french fries. One of my signature dishes on the tables, if it's the blackest tie wedding or a casual wedding, I always put a basket of french fries on the table. Because <laughs> not only is it a reality food, that you know everyone, there's nobody that doesn't love french fries. But it also adds conversation to the table. Oh my God, french fries, and you start passing <laughs> them to people, people start stealing them. So it's a great way to bring everyone back down to who they really are and not uptight or not, sometimes it's hard to meet people at a wedding. So um, I just did a wedding back to my mac and cheese where we kind of did a wonderful bowl in between every two guests and it became very family stylish and people loved it and we added that to their meal of steak and you know the vegetables and stuff but it personalized it and people enjoyed what they were eating. So if you have an old family recipe, grandma's you know, special rice or um, a great bowl of matzo ball soup. When we did Adam Sandler's wedding, he started the whole meal off with matzo ball oh soup. Oh, my God. Tell us more about Adam Sandler's wedding. Come yeah. on. We, we, you know, uh, they've been married. They're, they've lasted. So we can put <laughs> that in the books. He's still married. Um, I want to say it's about 15 years now, 14, 15 he's years ago. He's as funny as he is in the films. Yes, he, he was fabulous. You know, he personalized his food as far as, you know, he loves New York. So we had, for appetizers, for cocktail hour, we had um, a guy, you know, making pastrami and corned beef sandwiches. The desserts were black and white cookies. You know, it was very personalized to what he loved to eat. 
So that's a really good way to personalize that. things. And people got a kick out of it too. You know, it's it causes conversation. Another wedding we did where I said the groom loves wine. Well, we set up for cocktail hour, we set up a wine tasting bar where he had five of his favorite wines and we had a little story there so people can read about this is John's five favorite wines. What is your favorite wine? So again, it was conversation. Lovely. They could try different things. We had an expert behind the table explaining the wines. It was very cool. Absolutely. So that is one great way to personalize your wedding with food. Another great course, and it's very trendy now, is social media. Yes. Now, I will tell you, I've had a lot of unplugged weddings lately where, you know, the brides and grooms are tired of seeing all these phones up in the air. It's hard. You know, and so now there's a compromise where they are not allowing phones during the ceremony, but afterwards they can bring out their cell phones. Yes. Um, so that's a good compromise, and sometimes they just don't want them, you know, the whole time. But if they do want them, of course, you can personalize it with your hashtag, mm -hmm. your photo booth. You know, if you're into a great uh, football team or a sports team, you could have props in the photo booths. Again, another great way to personalize your photo booth. Since everybody loves photo booths now, what's going to make yours different? Um, so social media, of course, is a really great way to personalize your wedding, even for your wedding website. Yes. Um, what pictures are you going to put up there? You know, what story are you going to tell? Are you going to upload it? A lot of people just put a wedding uh, website up and never update it. This is a funny, personalized way to get ready for your wedding and um, do a nice countdown along the way. Yes. Humor. Humor, people remember. <clears throat> Seriously. Cheesiness, they don't. You know, they remember it in a bad way. But if it's you and you are cheesy, do it. Yes. Because then again, you personalized it. Okay. Snapchat um, filters are a thing now as well, aren't they? Snap the what? A Snapchat filter where you can actually have your... Yes, you know, we buy a lot of Snapchat filters. But uh, again, I will say Instagram seems to be more of a thing now. Yeah. But you never know. Tomorrow there'll be something else new. So we're, I'm trying to keep up with all of it. You find that okay. couples literally want to brand their wedding, you know, with a hashtag and the filter. It's about branding. Completely. Yeah. And we are doing a lot of custom monograms, even though I'm over the monogram on the dance floor. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I still do it if the bride and groom wants it, but I'd like to f see some new things around. So but for the invitations and for tradition, I love a monogram. But not on the dance floor. Tell, no us, so, tell us some fun ways to personalize the dance floor. What would you love to see on the dance floor? Well... We, we did one wedding uh, this year in New York, and they came to me when we first started talking that they're, you know, every bride and groom has a priority. It's either going to be food or great music or destination. There's always a priority, and this bride and groom's priority was dancing. They wanted to have a party. They wanted everyone to dance. So literally on the dance floor, we wrote out, Let's dance. Mm. Just those two words on the dance floor. Something as simple as that caused a stir. Who knew? You know? <laughs> because it wasn't formal, yet the wedding was pretty formal. And it was fun. And it just sent the message that we want you to dance. Get up here and dance. We've also matched things from invitations. The border of the dance floor is the border that was on the wedding invitation. Beautiful. Certain flowers, certain borders. And then again, you could just have a plain dance floor, and with lighting, you can create so many things, whether it's just a pattern, uh, certain um, textures on the dance floor. But dance floor literally has, we have to check off a box on my list of designing because that's how important the dance floors become by the way mindy has amazing instagram stories if you don't follow her on instagram if you're losing, <laughs> follow her on instagram because i've seen quite a you do you love um showing off some of the the, the dance floor and party elements you know, and i'm always seeing like bright yeah. lights and 80s and roller girls and it's fun yeah it's another yeah. part of, to get to get creative with exactly. not just the dance floor <laughs> exactly and you have to if you think in your mind that's what people are staring at 
the music and the dance floor yeah. for the four to six hours. So why not make it a great, a great um, touch to stare at? We are getting so many comments saying, you've got so many super fans, Mindy. <laughs> like Everyone's that. just saying, um, Lisa saying, and, um, and I appreciate it. <laughs> don't think I don't appreciate it and know when I get new followers. I love it. <laughs> um, Robin says, Mindy, we love you. Love the Rosewood London girls. Um, oh, hi, girls. <laughs> um, we've got Cynthia saying, hi, Mindy, love you. Hannah, she's amazing. Mandy, this is good. Hey. Oh, all the compliments are coming in. Um, Thank you. And we've had one question in that I can just jump to, which is, um, okay. are photo booths still a thing? <laughs> you know, I thought they were going to go away, <laughs> but I'm not doing one event besides weddings. I'm not doing one event without a photo booth. Oh, my God. Not one. <laughs> Everybody still wants it. So I'm trying to think, how do we change it up? So I'm, I'm looking for different backgrounds and I'm, I'm backdrops. And I'm looking for new kinds of props, you know. So as long as they keep wanting, it's my job to figure out, okay, what are we going to do to change this up? They're not going away, oh, unfortunately oh. <laughs> not. <laughs> they are great fun and that little memento from the They world. are. You know what? I shouldn't say unfortunately because no. it really adds an activity. They're at every price range. Um, it's a great, instead of a party favor, they get to take home a picture, send it right to their Instagram or their social media. So I do think it's a good thing. And um, it adds, again, that little bit of humor and reality to the wedding. And it's the actual yes. instant moment that people want preserved. Exactly. And, exactly. And what about, you know, when couples are trying to figure out their wedding style? Like, where do you start? What, what are some great starting points? Well, usually when we start our first kind of design meeting, I really do ask for their, their Pinterest board. I really do because even though they may come to me with five different styles, I can go through it and literally pick out one constant style. Yes. So whether it's a color or whether it's a certain flower that they're totally attracted to or um, you have to think of the time of year. I once had a bride who was getting married in the end of November, very cold, but she wanted a beach-themed wedding in a hotel. <laughs> now, I had to explain to them that this made no sense because people are going to be dressed warmer no matter what. Um, they were nowhere near a beach. Now, I love the fact that it would personalize it because they, were, they love the beach, but there's other ways we could have brought you know, that in as far as colors and water, watercolor, you know, um, drawings on seating cards and everything. So think about the time of year. Think about where you're getting married because that can bring in your own wedding style. Yes. Um, think about your favorite colors, which, of course, is very important. Uh, this year I'm still, of course, seeing a lot of white. Yeah, but yeah. we're you know we're popping in our Pantone color of the year. You like? Are you a fan of ultraviolet? Uh, ultraviolet. Um, you know my clients love shades of purple. Oh, they they do. do. Um, so I have about three weddings where we'll be bringing in some purple. I have one main wedding that's going to be fantastic. We want to Hold be the first to think hats. about it. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, um, and that will have a little bit of purple in it. But yes, like I'm seeing still a lot of whites and greens, touch of blush. You know, it's it's where it's my bride's comfort zone, now, as I call it. Purple's obviously a royal color, and we all want to know if you've yes. been asked to attend Meghan and Harry's wedding. Or are you gonna? Are you too modest to say? <laughs> are you kidding? If I was going, <laughs> I already have the story up of what I was wearing. If I was going. No, I have no connections to them, but I'm a big royal. They're missing I'm out. A big royal follower. My first wedding, I got married three days after Princess Di, and um, oh. I came to London to see her wedding gifts. You know, I was a huge fan. We all are. So yeah. I will be watching. I may have a royal party, yeah. a royal watch. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. 
So we are big fans over here in California, the Royals. The cutest people. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got lots of questions coming in. Um, Marcy's asking, hi, Mindy, what new things are you seeing in the way of invitations? invitations well I will tell you nine out of ten we are sending emails for the save the dates which is more than I've ever done before because I really feel the save the dates can be really the more fun part of the mailing process but we are doing because I find my Millennials are a little more um, budget conscious yes conscious. and they're more ecologically conscious so I definitely see emailing save the dates. Um, but for the wedding invitations, I'm still seeing a lot of letterpress and engraving. Mm. Not so much thermography anymore at all. Mm. Most of it is letterpress and engraving on beautiful Italian, lots of cotton-filled paper. And I saw you at that <laughs> Italian paper place and you were having the time of your life. You were like in heaven, weren't you? So unexpected. My husband loves to sightsee. I love to shop. <laughs> that was his day I planned for him. Actually, he had about three days when we went to Pompeii, too. But that was his day. It was actually a Jewish founding paper company. Absolutely. Just so you know that, that's why we were there. Because oh. it was started by Jews. And the fact that I got to make paper, it was it, to me, because I'm a paperholic, it was a wonderful experience. But that type of paper, filled with a lot of cotton and rags and, and some texture for invitations, um, hard in, in feel, a little heavy weighted. Mm -hmm. um, you saw our new beautiful stamp. Well, I, I guess not in, in England, but in California and in the U.S., we have a new love stamp that is mm. fantastic. I like the sound it's of that. So beautiful. Check it out. Because um, I love stamps and everything to go along with it. So I'm not seeing fun invitations, goofy invitations. I'm seeing classic invitations that when you look back on them in 20 years, you will not be embarrassed. I love that. And Rabbi Andrea Frank. She's based in New York. She's saying, Mindy, when you have a Jewish or Jewish wedding, right. do you guide your couples to continue the Jewish or Jewish theme in their wedding receptions, i.e. foods and rituals? Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes, it does. You know, I was really excited. The wedding I did in New York actually was at a synagogue. I don't have a lot of opportunities to do the ceremonies in a synagogue. It was not only heartfelt, we couldn't get the handheld hoop exactly right, so you know it made me nervous when they went up there and put them in the <laughs> containers. Yes, um, yes. But that already had a lot of the Jewish deliciousness in it. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you know, when we go to the party, we have our hora, you know, always, always have the hora. Even with the millennials who are like, think they're too hip for the hora, I get them to do it. And, of course, everyone, Jewish, not Jewish. Well, they Jewish. consider not doing it, and you say. Oh, I have my um, African-American athletes who love to do a horror, okay? And I am <laughs> not kidding. They met, you know, love it. And anyone who comes in that's not Jewish, who calls the hoopa a chupa, they <laughs> all want a chupa. A chupa. You know, and I go, it's a huppa, and we'll call it a gazebo for you. And but they, you know, it's such a great tradition, and people love that tradition. I've even had uh, non-Jews breaking glass because they really? think it's so cool. Wait, you know, it can it can mean so many things. What do you think you of this? Know, this is our new so smash pouch for smashing the glass that we've I produced. love that. Can you smash see that? Very cute. Yes. A little pink lining inside for smashing the glass. Oh, it Where is that? Do you sell that? So these are part of our, we've just launched a club called VIB, a club for very important brides. It's like a members club for smashing oh. the glass. Yeah. And this, they get this if they become a member. So it's, it's a cool thing. Darling. Darling. We just very felt like nice. enough with the velvet pouches and the napkins and the foil and the glass flying yes. everywhere. And 
you know, millennials. <laughs> millennials, for sure. And, it, and that, it's easy for wedding planners to come pick that up. Yes. Because <laughs> you know, we are responsible for getting it. And I can't tell you how many times we've gotten little cuts on our hands trying to pick up. Oh, yeah. And I had a photographer. She, um, a glass was just wrapped in a napkin, and the shard just kind of flew into her oh. leg as she was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've only had one groom that's hurt himself, though, so I've been very lucky. And also another trend yes. uh, for my rabbi question is I did two weddings last year where the bride and the groom broke a glass. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Was new. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, I had never had that before or asked. I haven't had anyone ask me for it. So so that was new too. It's wonderful the way we're keeping these fabulous centuries old traditions but making them our own. I think that's fabulous. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then when I have a mixed marriage, we do the glass and the unity candle. So we represent. Okay. And I always think when you have a mixed marriage like that, that mixed religious marriage like that, that it's nice to have a program explaining the traditions. You know, what is a chuppah? What is a unity candle? Why? What does it mean? And so people people really take home some knowledge, and um, I very, think it's cool. We like kind of suggesting that people have fun with their wedding programs when there's going to be kind of two different faces, and no one really knows what's yeah. happening. And you right. make that fun as well, and it's not just about yes. describing the traditions. but I really, agree. There's so many elements. Awesome, yes. And what about destination weddings? We're getting questions about, um, we've seen a lot of Italy in the last few years, Robin's asking, but we're interested to know what the next hotspot is for destination. Well, this year I'm going to Italy twice. I have gotten in the past month two inquiries about Mallorca. Mallorca, I love Mallorca. I know Mallorca quite yeah, well. Yeah, and I've never been there. So I must go because obviously it's... Um, it's very uh, popular right now, and people are interested in it. Um, easy to fly into as well. Uh, yes, but mostly Europe, mostly Italy, because all my wedding planner friends are booking a lot of Italy. So we're not done with Italy yet. <laughs> um, you know, when in California, this side we go to Hawaii. We do a lot in Cabo, yes. Mexico. Sure. Cabo San Lucas is. Every uh, year, more beautiful hotels. So we're, I'm doing two in Mexico this year. So I will tell you that every wedding lately is a destination wedding. And tell me so that, that is not going away. That is only building and building, which is so interesting to me because of the cost. And tell yes. me, where, where in Italy is hot in particular? Um, Lake Como. Yeah. Uh, Venice is becoming, Venice. people never asked me about Venice, and now people, especially millennials, are patient with the boats, and they think that's cool, that's part of the experience. <laughs> that is awesome. First, Tuscany, you know, is a big ask all the time. So, you know, those are the drugs of choice right now in Italy, and... Um, Florence. I think those are our mains. Florence is amazing. I have not done a wedding in Florence, and that is one of my favorite cities. Yes, so we've, we've, you um, never know. We've yeah. featured some fabulous destination weddings in Florence on Smash in the Garden. Yes. They've got the most incredible synagogue in Florence. It's the most beautiful thing oh. I've ever seen. I don't think so listen, all your London fans are just... Um, come to London, Mindy. We I, I was there two years ago during Christmas oh. because my son is insane about Tottenham. <laughs> you know, the football team. He wakes up at five in the morning, puts on his jersey, even in New York. <laughs> he has to wear his jersey while he's. And I didn't realize how hard it was to get tickets. But I worked my magic, sent him and my husband to the game. Best experience ever. So well, they, they played, will be back. They played a match tonight. Um, Claire's husband, I think, who is, is it? And they won 2-0. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't text me. <laughs> well, so, we'll, yes, we'll take you to the top. It's a very much in our hearts. And we had, when we were there, it snowed, which I didn't know it snowed in London. But we had a fabulous time. 
I, I was kind of dreading the trip because it was forced upon me, but it ended up being really fabulous. We visited many synagogues, and we had a, a wonderful experience. Oh, well, we would well, love we didn't to. know each other yet. I know, but well, there's plenty years ahead. We'll, we'll, do, yes. we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, so we, we are going sidetracked by all these questions, but uh, by all these questions. But tell us about a couple of other fun things you've seen. Like alcohol is a good one that people don't think about, right? Exactly. You know, we're not doing so much naming the drinks anymore, as much as it's their favorite drinks. Uh -huh. So we literally take a section of the bar and we serve the bride and groom's favorite drinks. They're kind of going back to these old-fashioned drinks, you know. Johnny Walker and, um, yes. you know, of course, a lot of tequila. <laughs> That's here to stay. It's really interrupted our uh, budgets lately. Because <laughs> that is not at a compromise at all. <laughs> yes. So a lot of tequila. But, you know, we still make a big deal out of their favorite drinks. Even after the ceremony, that's on two trays, his and hers. And then... When they go into the cocktail area, there is a theirs. Okay. So if the, together, they may have a favorite drink. So that's kind of cool, too, if it's the same. And I've just got to jump in with a question. We're not going to keep you too much longer. You've already given us a good 30 yeah. minutes of your precious time, so we're going to close yeah. it soon. But I just want to say, where would you get married? To obviously the same husband, but where would you get married? <laughs> same husband. This, he's my second husband. We've been together 24 years. And my junior high school crush. Wow. And he saved every love letter since seventh grade. He didn't like girls in seventh oh. grade just yet, but I was all over him. Oh. Anyways, um, where would I get married? Well, sadly to say, Montecito, California, no, they just had the horrible mudslides. Yes. But they will be back. Everything's closed down there, but Montecito, which is not an airplane away, Montecito is where my heart is, and I don't know why. I can just tell you when I get off the highway, there something happens, and mm. there's magic in this little town in Montecito. So That's why you're that, that is where not Ravello, not Amalfi Coast, not Montecito, California is where my heart is. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if everyone leaves today with just one top tip on how to personalize your wedding, what, what, what can we leave them with that's, that's their big takeaway from today? Well, besides all the stuff, you know, because you guys could come up with all the stuff. What really will personalize your wedding is if you go into this wedding having the time of your life. I find if the bride and groom are out on the dance floor and they don't separate during the evening, stick together, meet people together, walk around the tables together, laugh, the joy in their heart that they made it down the aisle to that I do, that alone will personalize your wedding because they will leave not only saying, oh my God, that wedding was so John and Susan, they'll say, oh, they're so in love and that you may rekindle other people's love and hope that they can find that kind of love. So that is my favorite way of personalizing a wedding oh, is yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's just the mush. You can't buy it. You yeah. can't pay for that. You can pay for a lot of personalization, but you can't pay for the mush. Yes. I so love that's that. what fabulous, I... Fabulous, fabulous advice and something that's yes. often overlooked. We're so busy. Yes, and if, and if I see my bride and grooms aren't mushy, it's more work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy, we yeah. could literally chat for hours. This has just been so Thank much you. fun. And Thank you for we'll having me. Again. Maybe you'll come and talk to our VIBs, our very important brides, about a topic. Whatever of you'd like, I'm oh, there Mindy, for you. Mindy, you're fabulous. Well, we'll we'll be in touch very, very soon. Okay. And Bye, everyone. Good night over there. Good night. I'm going to close you off on Skype, Mindy, and I'm just going to carry on talking a little bit on the live. But... Thank you again. You've been fabulous, and I'll be in touch with Paige very soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm going to carry on. With We're still live. Let me just get back on screen. So, yeah, I just, this is it now. It's the end of the summit, and we've been going for five and a half hours. We have had the best time. Um, thank you, everyone, for all your comments and your likes and your loves and your shares. And 
just it's been such an amazing experience for me and I know for everyone involved and I want to say a huge thank you to Claire who's been working solidly <laughs> the whole time making it all happen and my husband Jeremy who's also none of them want to come down and come. <laughs> thank you and um, tell make sure that you check out that link just above so that you can become a VIB we've got so much good stuff for you um, inside the VIB club as well as this incredible smash pouch very limited edition we're only making them in certain amounts so make sure you grab one of those um, just so much good stuff um, that you can see here um, everything's in the link so I won't go over it now but there is that special launch price so make sure you catch that um, at, the, at the, the launch price before it goes it will never be repeated that price um, and that's the price in pounds. So, and if you've got any questions about VIB or how it works, um, you can pop us an email, vib at smashingtheglass.com. But it's really, really exciting. And thanks everyone so much. And my brother, I'm biased, but Karen, you are fab. And the song was amazing. Oh, that means so much, Andre. Thank you. Andre's playing his own part in the VIB club as well. Um, <laughs> that's all I'll say, my brother. And thank you, a huge thank you to Lisa Johnson, who's watching. Who's She's just been a huge part of this VIB club as well and still is. And thank you, Lisa. Um, so that's it. We're going to close up. We've done five and a half hours worth of content and it's been incredible. We're going to put it all together for you and send it out um, if you missed any of the bits. Um, and definitely check out that link. And we want everyone inside the VIB club. So that's it. Good night. Hi, I'm Karen Cinnamon. I'm the founder and editor of the world's biggest Jewish wedding blog, Smashing the Glass. I'm beyond excited to invite you to join my brand new VIB club. VIB stands for Very Important Bride. And yes, you are a very important bride. As a VIB, you'll have my constant support in planning your Jewish wedding. We've also got exclusive discounts and gifts from the world's most wanted wedding vendors, as well as a very limited edition Smashing the Glass branded Smash Glass pouch that you cannot get anywhere outside of the club. You'll also have personal help and attention from me, plus online bridal masterclasses from industry leading vendors in our VIB Facebook community, including Ask the Rabbi and Wedding Hashtag Master minds to ensure you end up with a perfect wedding hashtag and so much more. The private members club will be filled with like-minded brides from around the world who'll have your back from everything from wedding gripes to finalizing the finer details of your dream day. I'll personally be constantly on hand along with my team to chat all things weddings. Think of it as smashing the glass Lux, your virtual maid of honor. As a VIB we've got you girl so find out more by clicking the link below, sign up to join the club, but bear in mind we're only taking a limited number of new brides to be a month, and let's make this relationship official.